All right, we are live. Everything is working properly for once. Hello, everyone. Woo, Hello there. <laughs> uh, the, Google's being really strange, and Meet is is running slowly, and we look choppy. So I might I might screw with some things, but you know, uh, for 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 what it's worth, this is mostly going off okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, as you can see, we have a guest today. We have our buddy Ryan, History Hello, Daddy, guys. here on YouTube. Do you want to Hello there. say hi, introduce yourself in case anybody doesn't know you? Um, hi, guys. Yeah, um, as Ayn says, I am Ryan, History Daddy. Um, I'm most well known for wanting to have relations with Alexander the Great. Um, <laughs> I cover a variety of topics from history, mythology and folklore, um, specifically Celtic and sort of Germanic and a little bit of Slavic um, folklore. Um, obviously, I do a lot of ancient Greece. I run my own um, little podcast, which uh, this morning I went through the Phantom Time Hypothesis, which... Um, um I, I think i lost a lot of intelligence going through all that and um yeah I've we been, can talk uh, about that too I, I i if you want to it hurt it hurt <laughs> i know i know i i know it's actually yeah. i don't necessarily yeah, so hate that later. Back. um yeah That's i think weird. it's like the, the the third or fourth time i've been on here actually yeah probably i mean we had you on about a year ago i think to talk about i uh i'm uh, fairly more and some other bigfoot kind of oriented yeah. stuff so i thought yeah you know going through and looking at uh everything well, this everything, sort of stuff is my jam yeah like, it's and if, it, if it's slightly humanoid in mythology and folklore i i'm what i know about it like it's well, my thing and most importantly if it's slightly humanoid somebody has tried yes oh, somebody has tried somebody has at least it. considered but unfortunately but absolutely yeah yeah but so that's as, that's as, that's kind of why I wanted to look at, though, is, you know, when you think about it, these humanoid creatures, we have, like, the, the two that we were discussing, you know, before the show were, like, Bigfoot and Selkies. Mm. Both of these are humanoid. Both of these are, I, uh, you know... I'm trying to think of the right word here without being vulgar. Um... I've seen a lot of lovable, lovable, lovable. Yes, a lot lovable. of people want to show love to these these yeah. things. With Bigfoot, it's I feel like it's a little bit more ironic, but with the Selkie, it's kind of the whole point. Yeah. Um. And you know, we were talking about the missing four on one phenomenon mm -hmm. this this past week on our show, and what what has occurred to me, what has kind of like coalesced as the opinion I have with all of this, is that with missing four one one, I think it might be a modern form in a lot of ways of what we have with things like Selkies and the Bavinci mm -hmm. and basically the stories of like supernatural occurrences that yeah. may in reality be a little bit more like they may have actually happened, but it might have been because of human beings who were mistaken for something else for some reason. Well, especially with, with the Selkie, like um, there's, so the background for um like before we even get into the myth the, one of the things that people say brought the myth forward was it's very easy one so if you're a woman out of wedlock obviously at that period in time like until very recently really you're in trouble if you're mm -hmm. if you're in with child out of wedlock if you, if you just go up to your family and go oh well i was walking down the beach and um the selkie came and he used his magical powers to seduce me so not my fault the mm -hmm. same thing husbands would turn around and say oh sorry hun sorry i cheated on you with those three um women but it was because they were all selkies and they like used their magic <laughs> on me sorry um it was also a case of um, men would use it as an excuse to disown children if they thought their wife had cheated on them or just mm -hmm. didn't want to pay stuff. And so the the, the the way the Selkie was used, at least as, as time went on, was a lot of explanations of very similar to changelings in mm -hmm. a way. Um, it's a lot more sort of a coastal version, especially on Orkney and the Czech. Orkney is one of my favorite places. Orcadian folklore is, is yeah. unreal. It's, it's stuff some like stuff, the, but... The, it, Knucklevy. The Knucklevy is all I'll say. We can also talk about that if you want to if you want to go off on it. But I really quickly I do it. want to want to, you know, now that we've kind of said a whole bunch of interesting things about Selkies, I kind of there's a good chance people don't know what they are. So we should probably talk about it, <laughs> which yeah. is, you know, I don't want to get too far in before we stop and, you know, say, hey, by the way, here's what we're talking about. So Selkies come from uh, from technically Scottish but more distinctly Orcadian folklore. It, uh, so it, 
all the Selkies are covered in Scandinavian, mm -hmm. specifically Icelandic, um, the Faroe Islands, then Orcadian and Shetland folklore, mm -hmm. then Scottish, then Irish, and a little bit Welsh. Yeah, they're so very like they're all over the place, which suggests yeah. when you think about that, it it does give you a few ideas of like how this idea could have come about, given that those are all places mm -hmm. with North Sea shores. Uh, so yeah. you know, it's probably something that has specifically to do with the North Sea. But I think what makes what makes Selkies uh, so interesting is that when you look at most Scottish folklore, uh, not most, I would I wouldn't say most necessarily, but a lot of Scottish folklore, what you come come up with, what you find, is that a lot of these monsters are shapeshifters. But more importantly, several of them are uh, are are very interested in seducing humans as a way to get to them so they can consume them and often in these stories like the babanshi for example will have uh, either deer hooves or deer ears there will be some little some little thing that tells you wait a second this isn't a person this is a fairy it'll be some sort of mm. you know animalistic feature and then you, like kelpies obviously horses uh <laughs> um, yeah so the idea is like if you run into a kelpie in human form it's it might have a yeah, horse tail I was gonna say kelpies normal can do that because it's mm -hmm. my favorite thing is like if it's if it's trying to lure children into mm -hmm. the water the kelpie is a horse and then everyone gets stuck on the horse the second it's an adult it's either an attractive man or an attractive woman yeah and they're like oh yeah come here and kiss me oh no you're being drowned now <laughs> exactly so with the selkie you get something entirely different which is that it's not trying to seduce you in order to eat you and in the case of the female ones they're not trying to seduce you at all mm. they're just there and you kidnap them by stealing their skin and hiding it and then they become your wife naturally i like that the opposite of course with the male selkies is that it's it, it's basically you know if a woman wants a, a rendezvous with a man selkie she just walks into the water sheds a few tears at high tide yeah and then just gets to you know enjoy herself whereas she the is. females like so the male selkies are having a great time the female selkies on the other hand are just having the worst go of it. There are, which actually plays right into Missing 411. If a woman went missing at sea, specifically mm -hmm. specifically a woman, it wasn't the same case, it wasn't the same case of a man. If a woman went missing at sea, it was immediately mm -hmm. deemed that she had a selkie lover and mm -hmm. he had taken her to his underwater home. Yep. It's, it's very that, that silly. Mm. But so with these guys, it's not that when it's in its human form, there's some sort of distinctive marker that if you look hard enough you'll be able to tell that you're actually looking at a seal person um it's that they take off their seal skin and they are no longer seals so they will appear to the naked eye as being a seal they will come up on shore they will remove their seal skin and they will become a, a irresistibly attractive human being for whatever gender they're looking at yeah um so with with that, it's it's different. This is also not something that is carnivorous. This is something that is actually the victim, oddly enough. And when you think about why that might be, there's a lot of suggestions that Selkies originate from actual encounters with real humans that were simply mm. misunderstood for some reason or another. So, uh, you know, obviously the one the one we talked about in our our Harry Potter video was the the Inuit theory. Uh, which we'll go into in a little bit more detail. But Ryan, I know you have a, a couple of other ones. Yes. Yeah, so, um, so from like from what I've been, because I've been really digging into this recently, like for my own video and stuff. And um, the why I looked into is there there is complete argument for the the origin of mm -hmm. where the selkie come from. Um, bearing in mind how old the myth is, some of the more modern tellings is specifically Spaniards came ashore, mm -hmm. and it was Spanish men. And the women were completely enamored with um, the Spanish men, which is someone who lives near Spain, I can attest. <laughs> that does happen quite a lot. The women are enamored by the Spanish men. Mm -hmm. And um, their black hair specifically, um, like that would eventually over time, the shipwrecked Spaniards would spread across mm -hmm. mostly the Celtic world and then be influenced by um, the, the Danes and the Norse coming over. Mm. So the where, other one, where were you able to trace the Selkie legend to? Like what time period? Um, the oldest I've seen, bearing in mind, it's really hard to trace because most of it's folk tales. Mm -hmm. 
so like um and folk tales are notoriously hard to trace where the origins come from i some people i've have suggested it is ancient celtic legend but i doubt that because i don't see any sources that validate yeah. that primary or secondary um i i think it's a lot of people go oh it changed after the christians come but i've never seen any stories pre-christian selkie stories and normally you find some pagan element to a story so mm -hmm. i think it's it's sometime after the arrival of christianity on the british isles mm -hmm. but just but also before the 1300s so you th you think it's like high medieval yeah all right so I, why is that um, just the way the story, so just just the way the stories are very ethereal. So mm. if you look at this time period, you're looking at the beginnings of the Arthurian legend. That like this is like Tintagel Castle was mm -hmm. being built by the English kings who are obsessed with being King Arthur. So despite and that's the fact with, that King Arthur was entirely was, was probably Romano Celtic. He was probably <laughs> Romano Celtic. Is the where character, the character is yeah. absolutely Romano Celtic. <laughs> yeah, the guy Arthur's entire being was to fight the Saxons. Who it's very like, funny. <laughs> which I know, um, English kings are very funny. Um, very silly. Just got to throw my hatred for Con Cromwell in there just for a second. But um, uh, <laughs> moving back to it. But anyway, so you see these sort of ethereal mythology and folklore coming in, and the Selkies fit perfectly into that it's very ethereal but it's not otherworldly mm -hmm. because there's no mention in any of the selkie stories that i found of another world it's the same with um the Nakhlevi and the, mm -hmm. the mithra of the sea and tehran who battle each other so right. it's all very sea based which it does link back to the ancient celtic pagan myth mm -hmm. but it's it's not directly linked to the other world they're still creatures of the sea they're more nature bound yeah. and there's actually stories of the Selkie being fallen angels, mm -hmm. which came down and were cursed, and also souls that drowned at sea and they come back to dance in the land and moonlight right. and stuff. In terms of time it, framing, with those specifically about being for or fallen angels, where have you been able to date those stories in particular? Um, I haven't been able to date them at all. That's Fair the enough. issue. Fair like, the, 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 which is why it's like very much a guesstimate of that. Is yeah. the, the, the 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 issue I always find, especially with Orkney, is the stories are so intertwined with the people. It's like they're so old that they've forgotten when they were told, but they're not that old, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. I I personally put it I think it's I think it's even more modern than that. But really? Yeah. So I I would wager personally that we're talking seventeenth or sixteenth century. I, I I think I'll meet you in the middle one. I'd say latest 1500s. Yeah. All right. So as for, obviously we talked about the Spanish possibility. What about the Nordic one? So, um, oh, that's going to upset some Europeans by what I'm about to say, because you said Nordic and I'm about to say Finns. Uh, <laughs> um, it's all right, Scandinavia. Please, please don't hurt us. Um, so the, the one I believe mostly that these stories come from um, his contact with Finnish tribes, or they wouldn't be Finnish at that point because it's, it's Scandinavian history is a whole other thing. Um, so the Finns come along and they obviously wore furs and they mm. were in canoes. So they would come forward and they would be looking at the same uh, like hunting grounds. There's less chance that that's a Celtic origin and that looks more at a mm -hmm. Norse or Scandinavian origin because obviously it would be those people who would be coming into contact with Finns. Mm -hmm. um, again, the reason I bring it up is because for Orkney especially, a lot of Orcadian legends are a blend of Celtic and Scandinavian mm -hmm. um, because Orkney changed hands a lot between the two groups. Um, so I think that fits the best because what would a fin Finnish person do or like as they come ashore to trade, they would obviously come ashore. They would possibly um, bed your wife as you're sitting there because it'd be an attractive, exotic man coming onto shore mm -hmm. and they would take off their furs which would then over time become seal skins and then gotcha. the exotic man goes back into the water or the pretty exotic woman goes back into the water um so yeah I, I think that's the easiest way to to see it yeah it's i i i can certainly see where you're coming from my my thing what i was finding was you get the the earliest written selkie legends around the i think it's the late 1700s that they start to they start to pop up yeah 
Uh, whereas you have the these confirmed sightings of what were initially thought to be Finnish fishermen off the mm. Orkneys and off the Shetlands. As it turns out, they were in fact Inuit from Greenland. So right, and their their canoes were seal skins. They they used seal skin canoes. So right. my thinking, and this is this may be my you know my lack of Europeanness. This might be my American side bleeding through. But uh, my thinking is that you have these these sightings of Inuit fishermen in sealskin mm. canoes that chart, start up around 1680, 1685. And then over time, that is what sort of inspires this legend. Because if you think about it, what say say you're a, a man living in the Orkneys. You're, you're not mm. educated. You're just a, a simple fisherman. You grew up, took your father's trade, you know, all that. And then one day... You you walk down to the shore, and you see a woman out there, beautiful woman, who is either not wearing clothes or is wearing few clothes or might even be wearing clothes, depending, because these things can evolve in a whole bunch of ways. Yeah. Uh, and they've got their sealskin boat next to them. Fishermen take sealskin boat. Selkie can't go home. Yeah. Selkie has no choice but to, in order to survive, wed into the family. Selkie eventually finds their boat and returns home, hence why there are these stories about every time the Selkie finds their skin, they return to their Selkie husband that, in the Selkie world. See, see that's interesting, because that, that particular format of story mm -hmm. appears almost all the time, and so, like, nearly every Selkie story I mm -hmm. found was the, um, the, mm -hmm. so the most common theme would be, it would either be a Selkie woman on her own, happily yep. just chilling out in the moon the moonlight is very very key i haven't been able to figure out why <laughs> but the moonlight they're always in the moonlight the moonlight is always brought up or they'd be dancing in a group and in some cases they wait they they steal the coat and then they wait sometimes mm -hmm. they they trap her and then they grab her steal her coat mm -hmm. um in some stories it goes full stockholm syndrome and the selkie falls in love and in some she's just obedient biding her yep. time in some she finds the box and uh, in some her children give it to her and then this is where it gets really dark the selkie woman always goes back to the sea because mm -hmm. so in some it's the, the so the selkie are um so for the for the most part from what i understand are cursed to forever long for what they can't have so if they're in seal form they long for the land if they're mm -hmm. in human form they long for the sea mm -hmm. um obviously if you've been spent years captive on land you can want to go back to the sea yeah so here in some stories the mother will talk to the children because she's heard her family singing to her for ages so she'll say i'll sing to you and then you can come and see me on certain times like da 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 because they can only come out i need to come out during certain moons in some stories sometimes she can do it whenever sometimes it has to be on midsummer's eve mm -hmm. um because having a coat like a cohesive folklore throughout europe would be too much to ask for ancient humans <laughs> mm -hmm. but um um and this is where it gets dark because in some stories she doesn't leave them she takes them with her and in some cases they become selkies because they are half selkie uh in some cases she drowns them because they remind her of her husband who kept her ha ca captive um, and yeah. in all stories in all stories yeah in all stories the husband is is left there just like it, uh, my favorite one i read mm -hmm. <laughs> was a guy a guy called um neil um mccudden I, i'm probably really mm. butchering that name but um and he kidnapped her and she got her seal skin back and then it ended with um but uh he was heartbroken that he left her and i'm sitting there going yeah, I, I don't know why he's surprised and it goes <laughs> but it was okay because his children kept him company the rest of his life and they vi occasionally visited their mother i'm sitting there going he's the villain in the story mm -hmm. <laughs> why why it was it's the way to me that the the man who captures the selkie in mm -hmm. these stories is treated as some poor victim because yeah, it's like, oh, his, his lover sea. left him. It's like, <laughs> who the lover who clearly, when she does fall in love and misses her husband in the sea, I'm like, that's Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, this like, is this is Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> precisely, and and so that kind of thing is why when I look at it, I do think that there is most likely a human origin to the story. It's just what hmm. kind of human origin? Uh, I think I think Finns or or Inuit are the more likely uh than the yeah. spanish the spanish one to me i it seemed so associated with the black hair thing that it just didn't mm. it didn't click as having the best it's, backing yeah. in my opinion because i mean there there are people think, who would shipwreck from all over the place 
I think it works. So something I've come to realize with both history and mythology is two things can be true at once. Mm-hmm. So I think it works for maybe a Welsh origin or an Irish origin, but not for a Scottish yeah. or Acadian or Iceland or Faroe Islands. Yeah. And as, when you think about especially Iceland, then the yeah. the Inuit one becomes even more possible because mm. then they're just coming over from Greenland. No, not, not even just possible, I mean, but more probable. Yeah. In Iceland, it's uh, it's still taken slightly more seriously from what I've heard. I can't guarantee that for true, but I, I know from a few yeah. Scottish people that I know as well, it's it's the Fey and stuff is still taken very seriously in Cape Yeah, I think that's because of the very interesting way that Christianity kind of made its way into the Celtic countries oh, and how Celtic. it was it was one of the yeah. first places that they actively went to do missionary work mm. within Europe was was the Celtic areas ireland and scotland and they you know had to go up there and basically be like hey we've got a cool new god can't worship any of the old ones though what, what, and so what happened they're like but, but we like them basically that they went but we like them and they said it's okay if you have stories just make them heroes literally just and make monsters them lesser instead beings. of gods yeah literally just, just down just downgrade the power level and you'll be fine my, exactly. one of my favorite things it's one of um I got in trouble a lot for the for the Satnalia and the Yule videos because mm-hmm. I just turned around and I was like, "This is clearly a, like the the every repeat every time that it was stolen." I, my argument was, "Why would they convert the pagans by stealing paganism?" Yeah, um, it's just like the entire. But it was very clearly a case of half the time when these celebrations did match up, it was like, "Oh, hey, yeah, we do that for like celebrating our guy as well. You can still do that, but you're risking burning in hell doing that." So if you do it our way, you're not risking that. So like, yeah, win, it's win. typically <laughs> typically it takes about three generations for a population to convert. The first one will kind of do it nominally, but they'll probably keep yeah. to their old practices. The second one will more like is more likely to have firm beliefs, but mm. is going to be less certain about it. And then that third generation is where you've got okay, well these are my firm beliefs. Yeah, I am I am with this now. It, obviously, there's situations where it takes less or more time, but. When you were specifically referring to how Iceland was related mm-hmm. to that in the Celtic world, uh, as he was mentioning how they hold things a little bit more, I don't want to say Tightly. realistically, but a little bit yeah. more, you know, they severely. Take it yeah, yeah, yeah. How was that relating to what you were saying about the Celtic uh, missionary work? Oh, I was just saying that the reason, like, the, it, it wasn't this, it was basically that when they went into these Celtic countries, hmm. and obviously Iceland was not. There were some Irish monks over there when the Norse got there, but for yeah. the most part, Iceland was Iceland was a Norse colony. But when they got to, for example, Ireland, and when Christianity was kind of being extended up to the Picts in what is now Scotland, yeah, the way it was done when it came into Rome, it was very aggressive. It was your old mm. gods are gone, and it wasn't the it wasn't like the bishops coming in. It wasn't a large yeah. Christian army that appeared on the doorstep. The Roman emperors basically said all right we're doing this now and the whole empire had to go along with it because they cut the, it was a state funded religion beforehand hmm. so all of the temples all of the festivals everything was being paid for by the roman government so i uh, i believe it was 3 it was either 325 or 380 but in one of those two years uh, I, f- I think it was free are you, are you three, about 380 was when the right. empire took christianity as the official state yeah. religion yeah so it would have been that yeah i think it was 380 when they basically said all right christianity is the state religion now which means we're not funding anything else no no more mm. festivals no more temples like you know you guys you believers can do it but we're not doing it whereas with the celtic countries it was a very different process yeah. they got up there no these weren't state funded re- religious festivals these were community organized religious festivals Mm. which is how the roman ones had originated but by the time of you know 380 a.d that was not the case so when you have these rome these missionaries going up there they know that they can't take the same strategy and just go to the king and convert him they had to convert the people by converting the people and one of the ways they did that was by going and saying all right so you can still celebrate your festival but you can't dedicate it to your deities it has to be dedicated to in some way to our God, or it has to be dedicated to nobody at all. It can just be a fun thing you guys are doing. Hmm. 
Um, what that manifested as in many cases was that the, the Celtic people said, okay, well, we're going to keep doing Samhain our way. We're just going to make it about the holiday you guys have on that day instead. Because as we know, All Saints Day is not derived from Samhain. All Saints Day and yeah. All Souls Day originated in a completely different area long before Christianity ever reached the Celtic Isles. So what happened was they got there and they said, hmm, well, we'd really like for you to come be our religion, but we understand you like your your practices. So how about we find a way to make this work? All right, your gods aren't gods. They're maybe fallen angels or they're saints or something like that. And you see mm. it kind of go in a bunch of different directions depending on which group they're talking to, what the being is. And in the, at the end of the day, you have, you know, the goddess Bridget becomes St. Bridget. Like, yeah. little things like that. Um, and you gotta remember, you know, going back in time, that this was a, a much more fluid situation than it is, than most people think it was. It was not nearly the level of, you know, uh, fire and steel kind of, like, conversion everybody thinks was going on. Yeah. Um, St. Patrick, for example, actually started with the women. He, he went to the wives, and he converted the wives. And then the wives went to their husbands and said, well, I believe this now. It's a little uh, Rasputin style, isn't it? A little bit. Well, a, a little bit less. Ras Rasputin um, didn't just convert the women. He would um, uh, he would uh, in engage the women <laughs> yeah. when he was converting them, shall we say. It's um, a kind way to put it. Gentle yeah. way to put it. Yeah. Yeah, but so that's that's kind of what my point was about, like why these things are still taken a little bit more seriously is yeah. there wasn't just a blanket like the floor fell out from everything it was all right we're going to find a way to make these two things work together yeah which meant that yeah. the celtic countries the nordic countries didn't have the same history of this is the way things are yeah they had yeah. a side-by-side -side evolution of christianity and their own myths and they worked into their own thing and christianity in those regions could never never really tell them no because they saw no problem with it yeah and but that was Sorry, go Good. Uh, no, but that, that also comes from... Because everyone sees the Roman Empire as this autocratic monolith. But an empire that big at that point in history could only run if there was individual governors who 90% of the time the Romans would appoint and then the locals would just be like, okay, cool. And then they would have their own guy. It would always end up being a local guy because it turns out if you have a local sympathizer, they're going to do a better job yeah. running the local area because they're going to know what to say. Oh, considerably so, better. Because... Um, as I, I stand by this, the the um, the Catholic Church is the um, mm -hmm. the follow on from the Roman Empire because the church had that the church had that framework from the Roman Empire. They followed that, and so it was local people would come. So that you'd have the original guy, and he would go, "I'm going to convert four people. You four go off, and now you yep. and now you run the place." And it it carried on that framework, and that was why it worked so well. Which is why I always say to people, if you want to get mad at the christian conversion of europe get mad at the northern crusade everything else was actually fairly yeah. peaceful everything else was pretty much just hey here's our god and then being yeah. like well we like ours better but we'll we'll recognize yours too yeah. and then eventually they just stop recognizing their own it's, it's, um, it's or it's, like it's the, the it's, there were specific cases with the vikings where they were like man that dude on the cross got hands like <laughs> Literally, it's really like, well, our gods were with us, and your god was with you, mm. and and we lost bad. <laughs> so that's you have right, situations my... where that is the reasoning for the conversion. That's, the Northern that's Crusades favorite, were... Um... Yeah. yeah, Northern Crusades. The, the Slavs are the only people who I will hear a bad thing about. <laughs> but they are, yeah, the... the, that's, that's one of my favorite bits in um, uh, the, the one Bedenburg, where he's trying to get Bedenburg back. Uh, the Last Kingdom. It? Yeah, the Last Kingdom. It's one of my favorite scenes in the Last Kingdom, where Guthrum sits there and they're like, "What do we do? We're going to lose the battle." And he goes, "Well, yeah, their God's clearly with them. This is logical. We've lost. We have to convert to Christianity now." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "I was like, that is such a good." I mean, the show went a bit wonky later on, but I was like, "That was such a good way to look into yeah. a, a Norse and Dane mindset of like, oh wow, no, wait, if if our gods were real, we would have won the battle. So so clearly mm -hmm. their gods are like, like either our gods have abandoned us or theirs is real. Like That's... there's only." That is one of the reasons I love Bernard Cornwell as an author is he's just he is so good at getting those little details right instead of finding a, a silly way to go about it. 
Um, I think Vikings also did a decent job showing showing how it worked, but I, I think Last Kingdom had yeah. it better. Uh, but that's you know what I wanted to talk about here. Obviously, was you know we've got this this story, these selkies. Whether it's whether it's my my belief that these were Inuit or you know what you presented with more of the Nordic side of things with the yeah. Finns. Um, either way, it sounds like what we have here is people landing on beaches, getting out of sealskin canoes or wearing sealskin coats, taking them off, and then essentially being kidnapped. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Backwards and forwards. Yep. And so then they, and of course we know that when they uh, when they get their skin back, they like to go home. Well, that would make sense if this was in fact a person who came from Greenland or from Finland yeah. and and was kidnapped and stayed on the shore. No, they're going to want to go home. They're going to rejoin their family. And as we know, we have, you know, the way that folk tales evolve is it could have been just one time, just one fisherman had this happen where uh, an Inuit woman washed up on shore. Maybe she was, you know, maybe she was washed ashore. Maybe she was unconscious. He goes and he, he takes the boat. He takes her back brings her back to health. She stays with him for a while, eventually gets homesick, finds her, takes her boat and leaves. And then the village hears about this and they they start, you know, talking about it. And you've got a fisherman who maybe ends up moving to another village or speaking to another fisherman and gets over there and he retells the story. But he retells that, mm. you know, oh, well, uh, he, he found the woman and and uh, and he found the, the, the skin and he brought the skin back and then and then hid it from her. And once she found it, she she decided she just had to go home. And doesn't quite track that maybe it's like, oh, she was homesick and she found her boat. And it just over time whispered down the lane. So you go from woman washes up on shore, is nursed back to health, actually does maybe fall in love, but then gets homesick and decides to leave. And that could turn into woman washes up on shore. Well, she stayed with him because of magical seal skin. And then it's, mm. well, she actually had a magical seal skin because she was a magical seal. There's also a side <laughs> note to that. In, there is a couple, I know, I know of a couple in Scotland, I can't remember of their names off the top of my head, there's a couple of families that own businesses that claim to be descendants of Selkie mothers. And I would I, love to to do DNA testing. DNA testing right now. Do it. Uh, yeah. If you have Inuit in your in your genes, I'm gonna know. Yeah. Uh, a couple of them have said yes, but I don't, like I say I, I I'd need to look into it more. It's it's one of those things where like you see it and then you like oh I'll look into that and then you like passes. But apparently one of the key ways to tell a selkie child is they have webbed fingers and webbed feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's which is. Well, so th that's the other thing is like, would that not be an advantage living in the Orkneys and the Shetlands and Iceland is if you have, if you, I mean, we know that, you know, certain people do just have more wedding and a population that lives in such a waterbound area, especially at a time where infant mortality and just mortality in general are ours. I think we have this as modern people, we have such a a warped understanding mm. of how vulnerable we are of our mortality because up until 1945 if you got a simple cut you could die mm -hmm. from an infection up until, up until like 60s and 70s tuber tuberculosis was still a, a killer now that's polio. like oh i've gone to the doctors yeah polio killed people in into yep. the 60s so yep. it's you and it's still killing people in africa but uh, that, you know, there's you know, probably could do something about that, and it wouldn't cost the pharmaceutical companies a penny, but they won't do it. Um, point is, Green gets shut down all of a sudden. <laughs> you you gotta, we gotta remember that this is a time where if you know if your boat capsizes and you're a mile you from shore, there's there's no coast guard coming to get you ASAP. You're not gonna have a helicopter flying over top of you. You're not gonna have to just tread water for a little while until somebody saves you. You're gonna have to swim back to shore. And if and there's five of you on that boat and two of you have webbing that goes you know almost to this this knuckle yeah those people are more likely to make it back to shore they're more likely to procreate mm -hmm. they're, they're, and that gene is more likely to continue well we see it even today i mean i just remember this off the top of my head and i fact check myself oh yeah this... correct but the i think it's the bow uh bahau bajau i don't know uh they're a southeast asian population of island you know essentially community yeah, i think yeah. they're polynesians uh, yeah yeah 
and they have a physical adaptation that allows them to hold their breath for over five minutes as opposed to you know professional divers from other populations only be able to reach three or four minutes yeah uh because a lot of their livelihood comes from diving and, and you know getting things from the sea mm -hmm. and, and think about it you're one of those divers if you can't hold your breath as long as everybody else you're not making it to the surface nope or you're just at the very least you're not doing as well exactly so you know it totally makes sense and is very much true even today that different populations have physical specialities that allow them to succeed more than others mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's wild i, I just and wanted you, you to can see it in I, sports even <laughs> I, I just wanted to i just wanted to quickly bring up um merrick 158 said if a group comes from the sea to save a selkie is that a seal team <laughs> and that made me chuckle <laughs> i'm gonna say yes Selk team six. I mean, I love that. isn't Selkie like derived from a Scottish word for seal? Isn't it a, a diminutive? Um, hang on, I have a document on this because there I'm is actually. Sure it is. So that I, I know the words. So hang on, wait. I'll see if I can find the words again. So basically, the the way it's meant to work is the original Old English, not English, the Anglo-Saxon language mm. word for seal, went up into Old Scottish mm. and then became the word for selkie and mm -hmm. then we then it went back down and got anglicized and became selkie yeah very strange because, and now i'm going to be quiet because yeah. the scottish and english are going to argue about the how intertwined our two people are uh <laughs> <laughs> but i th the reason that i found that to be such a fascinating possibility that these were in fact human beings that washed up and and weird weird stories resulted from it because we're dealing with the, the edge of the world um, you know a population living at the literal edge of the world hmm. uh you look at other stories from around the world where you wonder is this possible you have populations where people the 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 monster whether it is a a selkie or something like sasquatch is described as being like a person but in some way slightly different Either maybe they have a seal skin that they can remove and become a human being, or they're larger and hairier and maybe a little bit more violent and more primitive. And what you can see is I look at that, I, I look at the Saskets of, uh, mm. of British Columbia, which are, you know, we obviously have never encountered one so far as we know. We may have, and it might have just been a completely different tribe. Uh, but the Chehalish... They say that the Saskets are six and a half to seven feet tall, sometimes even taller than that. They're much more broad than your average man. Uh, they are very fast and they are capable of uh, human vocalization. And this is talked about, and depending on which source you ask within the community, as J.W. Burns found out, if you, some will say, no, they're not us. They're not human beings at all. They are something else entirely. They're a different species. They're monsters. Don't go near them. Some of the others say, well, these are these are humans. They're they're Indians like us. They're just more savage. They're more primitive. They live out in the mountains. They live in caves. Mm -hmm. And when I look at that, I, I see the same thing. I see not that Bigfoot is a, a giant hairy mm -hmm. ape, but that it's possibly a result of these stories. Like, you know, you might get the same thing with the Sulkalu which is the Cherokee one from down in the U.S. Southeast, where it's these guys are larger, they are apex hunters, and they live off in the mountains. And they have slightly slanted eyes. And then there's the little the little tidbit from the Roanoke story. Oh, yeah, and there's the part where uh, William Strachey said that the, uh, the Powhatan take apes in the mountains, like they hunt apes in the mountains, and there were no apes in the mountains there's there's not been a there's not been a non-human primate in north america for 26 million years at least that we know of so what do they mean by apes uh I in know my opinion in my opinion probably the same kind of thing as the saskets maybe a a mm -hmm. larger more savage tribe of human beings that they didn't recognize as human like so I, and we know we know that populations all over the planet have gone to new places run into anatomical humans and gone oh those aren't people for a number of different reasons some of them were understandable just that they looked so incredibly different and then in other cases it's it's more just an excuse to do slavery 
and I was that literally what I was yeah. building up to. But also to build off of what you're saying there, directly off of the Selkies mm-hmm. in mainland Europe, there is stories of swan people, exact same, except swan skins. In the Amazon, I learned mm-hmm. this today earlier. Um, there there was a um a mythological being called Encantado. Mm-hmm. I deeply apologize to the entire yeah, that one. Where it's it's dolphins. Interesting. Exactly. Slight differences, but same pre- premise. See the dolphin one. I wonder about because that that those could just be dolphins, given the dolphin anatomy, and that one thing NASA. Did. I don't want to think about. I mean, there is. Oh, that did one... you not know about the NASA experiment where they had a woman fall in love with a dolphin? Course, no, and I think a lot of our NASA. audience didn't know that as well. If you want to give a quick summary, I'm ninety percent sure it was NASA. I don't I'm... know the story the story super well, but I, I, I want to say it was like CIA back in the sixties or seventies. Uh, they had a woman, they were basically trying to see, you know, like how, how intelligent dolphins are. So they Wasn't had a to, woman. If we could understand English and vi- if they could understand I, English. I think it was something like that. Dolphin. Yeah. There, yeah. There's a. The Dolphin Who Loved Me. Yep, that's a funded project that went wrong. This is the title of an article in The Guardian from 2014. In the 1960s, Margaret Lovett was part of a NASA funded project to communicate with dolphins. Soon she was living with Peter 24 hours a day in a converted house, Christopher Riley reports on an experiment that went tragically wrong. I just don't have anything. I, there's nothing well, further have, to say. You can all, you can all understand again. what happened here. Was there anything that the United States government in the last century was not willing to do an experiment on or <laughs> with or about? See, that, that, that entire thing gets so much worse. That dolphin thing gets so much worse. Oh, it gets considerably worse. Like, we can't talk about it on this stream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything that was, in fact, off-limits to the U.S. government in the last century, and I think it might solely be able-bodied white men. And I realize how, like, woke I sound right now, but I'm thinking about it. I'm, like, going through the list. And, like, yeah, they sent a lot of us to war, and a lot of us died. But as it, far as the human experimentation goes, I, I can't think of something that they they put like guys like the three of us through. The the, U, the U.S. government in the '60s is just vault tech. In fact, yeah, the, I would say the Enclave is the best depiction yeah, of the U.S. For, government. For those in for those who have not played Fallout, Vault Tech uh, is the the company in Fallout that built all of the vaults. That when everybody when the nuclear war happened, everybody went underground, and the thing was they were sold as fallout shelters they were sold as you can just you're just going to go in and you'll be safe from radiation and whatever happens and then after a certain period of time you'll all emerge and it'll all be fine but then in basically every single vault but i think a couple of them they did weird human experiments which again to me i'm like is now really the time (laughs) it's really not is this the time no Uh, of all times no but yeah so that's 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 what the vault tech reference is um Somewhere like cryogenic freezing. I think one they deliberately mutated people. Uh, Vault 69 uh, and 68 are the darkest experiments. What, what were those ones? So 69 is one... I think Vault, Vault 69 was one man and 999 women. And then Vault That just seems like a lot of problems. See, Vault 68 is the disturbing one. Because Vault 69, I feel like that guy was... Of course was Vault 69 was the sex vault. Yeah, Vault 68 yeah. was... Vault 68 was one woman, 999 men, mm-hmm. and I, she did not fare well in the law. Oh, yeah, I would um, imagine not, no. Oh, also, really yeah. quickly, uh, our comment section one up to you. Uh, it, it, nobody was off limits, MK Ultra. Oh, that's true. See, but the only, the only victim of that that immediately comes to mind for me, and it might just be that I don't know enough about it, mm-hmm. is Charles Manson. Fair. Who was definitely not mentally well yeah like he he was they picked him because he was unstable but the people he killed were uh, he was also Pip he Zinsky. was also below average Pip intelligence Zinsky was he was MK he had been through the system I, I mean the guy was he was um, he was scrambled but there was, i mean yeah i can take Kaczynski a look at was it. mk ultra was he Kaczynski, because i'm fairly one of my friends is very deep yeah actually you know what that sounds Kaczynski. right yeah. yeah all right so nobody was off limits Good job, guys. Yeah, anything that they didn't do, they just, you know, kind of, like, took from whoever did it. Like, yeah. 731 and, you know, everything from the first half yeah, of the last century. When, when you look yeah. into... Guys, it, it it gets so much worse. 
just just look up where all of our our why there was a sudden medical breakthrough just after World War Two it has nothing to do with the paperwork we got from the Austrian Painter Fan Club and the Hirohito Fan Club. Yeah, um, and it's it's also like uh, you know how did we how did we find out that uh, that syphilis could be cured by penicillin? Hey it's, guys, what would the police? It's the actually, police it's actually that we found it out in a completely different way, and the government decided to not use it. They were just like, ah, let's let's just give give all these black people, these these black guys, penicillin or not penicillin. Sorry, not. We're just gonna let them have. They they have syphilis, and we're gonna tell them we're treating the syphilis because we don't know how to treat syphilis. We we do know how syphilis progresses because there was another study in Norway like twenty years ago. But we we want to find out how how it does in black people and then 15 years into the study it becomes first of all it was only supposed to last six months 15 years into the study it, it, it becomes very clear that penicillin works and they don't need to do the study because untreated syphilis doesn't need to ever happen again <laughs> and yet they continue it anyway until 1972 if you haven't seen our video on the tuskegee experiment it is so much worse than you thought it was if it if it makes you feel better, our government did fill an entire island with anthrax. Our government went to MIT and got disabled children, like ment mentally disabled children, and fed them uh, plutonium oatmeal. Is there any Germans or Japanese people in the chat? We need to like feel better. I'm sorry, about wait, 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 wait. <laughs> this one I'm entirely. Oh, not you didn't with. know about the plutonium oatmeal? No. Oh, buddy. this sounds like a video. I, I think Kyle Hill has a video on it actually, but oh, yeah, we no. can definitely oh, do one in his Half Life series. Yeah, that makes sense. probably. But yeah, it's yeah, it Los, Al Los Almos body snatchers. You know that one? I know the name. I don't. Yeah, know they would. They would when people would die in radiation accidents or just people who worked at Los Almos would die. Uh, without the the family's permission, they would go and they would take the body from the morgue and they would run tests on it. Natural. That one wasn't quite as bad because it wasn't they weren't like blasting them with radiation then killing them. Yeah. And and autopsying them. It was they were like, "Ah, you worked here. This is imperative to national security." But I, I, my my point I, in bringing all of this up was actually to get back to the Bigfoot thing. Um I do which, love I do love really quickly though for a second this conversation turned into the equivalent of like, "Well, I only got 3 hours of sleep last night. Well, I only got yeah, 3 exactly. hours of sleep in high school, but it's well, my government was this bad." <laughs> <laughs> the good news is you will never be as bad as the government of China who looked at every atrocity of the 20th century and said, hold my beer. Uh, <laughs> and then did all of them at once. There is there is currently a concentration camp and a genocide going on. And we're just not talking about it because it's wait, inconvenient. Don't, don't forget the Ottoman Empire is the only empire in human history to commit three mass unalivings at once. Oh I yeah, don't know right. If I can say Wait, the G was, word on aside YouTube. from the Armenians, who else? Armenians, Greeks, Kurds. Um, oh yeah, I think. Well, that, yeah, I think the Greeks. The Greeks. They didn't kill them. They did a giant. Mm. They did, well, they probably killed some, but they did a giant population swap with Greece. Huh? Oh yeah, in like 1920, the Turks sent like a million Greeks living in Turkey to Greece, and the Greeks sent like a million Turks to Turkey. They just swapped them. The, the the Turks the Turks did try a little bit of um can I can I say E C on this one? The ethnic Yeah, you can say that. Can I say it like the Turks did a little bit of ethnic cleansing on the Greeks. It wasn't as like a full um genocide, but I, I can get away with a G word on yeah. the F with one. We're gonna find it. I mean we're yeah. our our show is uh, YouTube knows we exist, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um they didn't it wasn't a full genocide. Um history revealed um, has a brilliant breakdown on it, like of like each one and how they did it mm -hmm. at the same time. I mean, if you're gonna do if you're gonna do them, you might as well do them all at once, right? Three birds, one stone. I guess. Yeah. I I, I mean, I think the, the, there was a the, it's a very interesting period of time when you look at it. Turkey was like, what if, what if we did three at once? Germany was like, what if we did two at once but one was specifically jews and the other ones just everyone else we don't like uh yeah. russia was like how do you make food uh and then china was basically just like we do not care that these well, are our people they can all die russia was how do you make food but also the jews uh, yeah, true. <laughs> was like Ru russia's was like we must get rid of capitalism kill all of the wealthy people why does nobody know how to make the grain 
Why oh, why oh. are all of the farmers failing to farm? Also, um, f- you killed fun all fact. the successful ones. Yeah. Fun mm. fact: One of the worst political Brain drain parties of the worst in, in Turkey that did a lot of the atrocities mm-hmm. was called the Young Turks, and so yeah. I'm very glad that no one would name their news organization after that. It would be crazy to name your yeah. news organization after like, the Young like, Turks. It would be like me naming my news organization the East in, uh, East India Company. It'd be like, <laughs> you know. I mean, America's never done anything wrong, so like we can't say anything. But of course not. Yeah. No. <laughs> The people Anyways, who win the all selfies. the time are never the ones exactly. who do anything wrong. Yeah. You're like naming our news organization, like, you know, uh, something like the Trail of Tears. Yeah. <laughs> or like, you know. We're slavery. definitely Fun teetering fact, when I met Aiden, Aiden, when I met Aiden, he was a Young Turks listener. I was. Uh, back early high school. Yeah, I fixed him. <laughs> <laughs> you, you and a couple of people from my high school. Yeah. Who asked me questions I couldn't find answers to, and I was like, "Where did you learn all this stuff?" And they said a certain person's name. Oh no, initials are M Y. Oh god, not it. And I was like, "Who's that?" <laughs> and that started a whole different spiral. Oh, I love this how actually... when I was a writer for Libertarian Republic, it was my job to write about that guy. Really? Oh yeah, it was that was there's my like... job? Oh, was there's all, actually all something did. that um, there's something Shank Yuga said that I won't repeat. I'll tell you both after. That is one of the his biggest downfalls. To what led to his I want to. I want to. Yeah. Where are they now? Segment it involves horses. Of, it involves I wanna, horses. Is I want to. I want to. There. Where are they now? Segment on all on all of the people who were talking heads from like 2014 to 2018. Mm-hmm. Because on both sides of the aisle, it seems like they've all just completely fallen apart. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> The, the like Isabella, Isabella remember Live. The, is remember the, the, uh, the intellectual dark web or whatever it was. Yeah, called. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you watch it and it's like now listen here folks it is not a genocide or ethnic cleansing because they're not people <laughs> and then what? you got then you got Jordan Peterson and he's like you just you have to go and rescue the Israelis from the serpent <laughs> we're officially never allowed on I know, I know, I know. I'm just yeah. making fun of Daily Wire because they've been so aggressively one-sided about that whole issue. Fair. Uh, apart, you know, apart from we, Candace Owens. Too, apart so. from uh, Candace Owens. We won't talk about this. And anyway, 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 it's not the, the subject of the show. Back to the uh, cell case. Followed any of it, so this Yeah, no, it's, it's all been very... I'm. Oh, by the way, I'm going with like their actual thing, like... The, some of the arguments they've legitimately made. I figured you that would. wasn't that wasn't me giving you which side of the the conflict I'm on because I'm not on either side of it. Uh, it does not it does, it does not involve me. Uh, but no. like, you know, I, I think I think the whole thing is a mess. Uh, but uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, so but like I've been looking at it and I'm like, oh man, people are really uh really coming with the hot takes in the media world right now. Um, but yeah, anyway the. The the last thing I wanted to talk about on the show specifically was um was the missing four on one aspect because I think that we're seeing sort of a similar thing go on with that where you're having these these really strange disappearances many of them are actually weird but a lot of them the the majority in my opinion have been completely explicable very solvable um and I think what we're seeing is very much that same kind of thing where you have a story it may be a few events and it builds into an entire mythology so i think that there's there's a few people who were probably taken by something I don't think it was a wendigo i don't think it was a you know seven foot tall hairy ape man with a weird cone head bigfoot yeah yeah um but <laughs> I'm I'm open to the possibility of it being all sorts of different things in the uh, in the human realm, whether we're dealing with serial killers in some instances. I think that there's not enough for it to be serial killers. These seem too isolated to be serial killings or organized crime. Um, but, you know. I think it's possible that there's just people living out there, probably. Like, and, and even if we're not talking about the national parks, you look at how big Canada is. And the fact that a breeding population of human beings is 50. I mean, 500 is like kind of the like ideal minimum sustainable. Yeah. Um, But 50 is like enough, enough individuals to maintain a population without suffering serious inbreeding effects. So when you look at that and the fact that, you know, you wouldn't necessarily need to have all 50 living in one place, 
they could be spread out across, you know, a thousand square miles. And when somebody needs a mate, they go and they go to another family and they take one from that family and bring them out. You, you could have a thousand people living out in the wild. And until the advent of satellites, you would never know. Even still. Even still, yes, but... Yeah, I was going to say, there's parts of the American forest that... There's parts of British forest that are too thick for aerial and satellite penetration. Yeah. I shouldn't have said penetration. <laughs> I uh, should never I... say penetration on no. the internet. But it's a great point, because if you look at the density, uh, like, especially the population density of out, like in the Rockies, you know, there are sections of forest for miles and miles and miles oh, oh, where there been... is nobody permanently living, as far as we know. There's the perfect example to, to to prove both your points is when the Soviets um, were pushing out. I think it was actually just after the fall of Soviet Union. Actually, no, it, no, it was the Soviets. There was actually a story. So they were pushing out, and the famous case is they found this family who had no idea that the, the Russian Empire had fallen. They were still talking mm -hmm. about the Tsar, and then the the entire family refused to go back to civilization. They were like, no, no, we don't need to. We don't need to deal with that. And then, in fact, they actually had people flying in supplies when the last member of the family, she was, she passed away. But the reason that's big is because what people forget is the Soviet Union were constantly finding families and people were constantly just disappearing. Not everyone that disappeared in the Soviet Union was disappeared by the, the Soviet government. There was actually a lot of people that just went, OK, so if I go into Siberia, no one's going to know. And I think that happening in America is incredibly likely. Mm -hmm. I I really do think that there is... I think the biggest problem with cryptozoology... Ooh, spicy take. <laughs> <laughs> I think the biggest problem with cryptozoology is that many of the people involved in it are unwilling to take a compromise. They're unwilling to step back from their version of it and acknowledge that maybe their version was inspired by something else. Yeah. And what that creates is a, a much bigger gap between what the claim is and where the current science is. So if you, if you take like, for example, what we've done in my opinion is kind of try and close that gap. And to my understanding, I haven't looked a ton into David Politis's work regarding Bigfoot. I know that's what he was doing before missing 411. But from what I understand, he's kind of in the same boat that this is not the the Gimlin tape Bigfoot. This is the this is more like Gimlin human beings. Fight. Oh, definitely. It's fake it's as hell. Fake, yeah. So but the problem is that's where the Bigfoot narrative is, is the, Gimlin, the Gimlin tape. Film. It's it Bigfoot is a eight to nine yeah. foot tall, lumbering, hair covered ape man. And that's all that's Bigfoot. Bigfoot is nothing less. I'm going to prove that exists. And then you have the scientific community going, that's not real. Like, if that was real, we would know. We would have found it. You have been looking for it for far too long. Yeah. Somebody would have come across something. Or even not necessarily that, just considering the amount of, you know, fossil record that mm -hmm. we've uncovered, we would have found some level of common ancestor yep. where that would have deviated to be able to say, okay, this is a theoretical deviation point that would make sense for that to possibly exist, but we haven't found. We, we don't have it. Yep. Can well, I offer a counter argument? Guess, but that's Asia. Yeah. Can I offer a counter argument? Sure. Now, ob obviously, I am very biased. As I, I am very much in the Bigfoot Yeti. The Yeti is one hundred percent real. No one will ever convince me otherwise. <laughs> um, Himalayan zombies. I'm wavy on. <laughs> uh, but um, so be super creepy if the bodies on yeah. Everest would change positions. <laughs> Oh, could you imagine? Oh my god. Yeah, it's not like that has ever happened, and there's no precedent for that at all. I'm sure um, it was just people moving them. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's a debate for another time. Um, there's actually folklore precedent for that as well, but again, another time, getting sidetracked. Um, but um, there is enough space in the, uh, in the American forests and Canadian forests for a large ape population to easily hide away mm -hmm. it's the only reason like it's the same thing when people go oh so like in my videos when i do stuff like this i never give my answer or my belief because i don't believe it's my mm -hmm. place to say it's up to the audience of the evidence i put forward and the counter arguments i put forward what i did what i am honest with with the wood woes is i believe that there was something there at some point but there's 
no way that it would be able to hide effectively now, not at least in the null. I think maybe there could be stragglers left mm -hmm. or easily, but it wouldn't be a breeding population. It yeah. wouldn't be around for much longer. And, and that's the thing. In America, is we, it's 100% will be. We find things we thought were extinct all the time. Platypus, <laughs> um, coelacanth. We, we're like, ah, that, that's dead. It's been dead for a very long time. And then we just find a population of them chilling on some remote island. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. I guess they were here the whole time. <laughs> And I think with, with Bigfoot, like, I, I can see, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's necessarily impossible that Bigfoot existed and was the thing that people suggest it to be. I just find it more likely that it's something a little closer to, you know, wild Two humans. Two things be true at the same time. Two things be true at the same time. Yeah, true. They could also both have existed. But I think just the, the body of evidence, what I look at is... You've got, if, if the argument is Bigfoot is wild humans, you know, people who are mm. living off in the forests and don't have the level of societal structure that we have cultivated, um, it would explain why you've never found bones. It would explain yeah. why the hair samples come up as human. Or as completely non-human, like goat. Like, it would explain those things. And mm. so that's, that's where I currently am, because that's where the evidence is, has led me um yeah but we can definitely talk yeah. more about it we're gonna do we're gonna do an episode that's gonna be on the whole like our opinion on bigfoot yeah um and if you want to do an analysis of the gimlin tape sure you know the same way that we did the mh370 one yeah, that yeah, worked yeah. too no totally um he was just on a uh, tim cast oh yeah yeah he was on the culture I've war i've seen that i've seen that i i i i have things to say that i'll say off camera you know i was down there <laughs> i was down there two weeks ago why did you stop I, them? I, I offered. You could have saved them. I, I said, <laughs> I said, we did an MH370 recently. I'm happy to talk about it. And no. We're not there yet, but. I'm not. What's ironic is we have way more followers than that guy. And and it's some for some reason, it's always him that they're asking. I can, I, I, I'll, t I'll say it afterwards because I don't, I don't want to say it. Um, I That's don't fine. Yeah. Get in trouble with Tim Paul. I, I, yeah. I, I have a feeling I know exactly why I did it, but yeah. Uh, yeah. But so anyway, that's, you know, it just, it bugs me. Uh, I wish it should have been me. Um, but yeah, hey, so that's, okay. that's kind of where, okay. I, I where I'm, do... but I, that's, I, I just, I, I'm glad we got to talk about it though, because the, the connections yeah. that I see between stories like that of the Selkies and Bigfoot and then what we have with Missing 411 where people want to want to attribute it to something that they understand as supernatural exactly. instead of something that can be understood in naturalistic terms. I think that is leading to a lot of the, the fighting and the pushback and all of that, because when I look at this, what I want to do is figure out a way to make sure people stop going missing. Because yeah. contrary, contrary to my financial, uh, my economic incentives, I would prefer people don't go missing. The more of them that go missing, the more money we make. I would rather not make money in that case. Like, I would prefer that the people stay alive. We'll find other topics. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. we can go talk about conspiracy theories. We do fine on those. Yeah. <laughs> like... I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure there'll be people going missing in the mountains of Asia and stuff. Is that because oh, the Yetis or, or, or um, Gigantopithecus? The, the biggest problem I have, the reason we don't cover much outside of the U.S. and Canada, it really is the, it's two main things. Obviously, I do not speak every language on Earth. Um, and, yeah. and Google Translate, no, I will never speak <laughs> uh, And Google Translate isn't enough. Um, it doesn't, it, it gets too many things wrong, so you can't always tell. Uh, and the other thing is, the United States of America has some of the most transparent like journalism laws out there yeah like i think there's i think florida for example you always see stories about florida because in most states you're not uh you're either not allowed to publish uh there's certain details like you can't publish certain details in most states florida has like no rules about it yep um or it's either that or it's the other way around where yeah, you're not no, allowed. Is it the other way around? It, no, no, it's, 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 I know what you're talking about. So yeah. Florida has more lax restrictions on what level of information of active cases you can report on. Yeah. So part of the reason why you see all of these Florida man does this, you know, Florida woman does that is because uh, for those cases uh, in most other states, 
at that early in the point, at that level of detail, you wouldn't really be able to have access to that. Whereas in Florida, as you were mentioning, yeah. it's essentially a free for all. So you get all of these weird stories that do occur in other states, but you just don't get the details to the level of journalistic capability that exactly. you have in Florida. So yeah. Yeah. It, Florida is like the gold standard for guys like us. Yeah. Like we would love if everyone was Florida. The thing is, uh, over in Germany, they have oh. they do not have to tell us anything. Here in the U.S., I can file a FOIA request, and as long as it's not an open, active criminal investigation, I get to know. See, it does not UK work like that all over Europe and all over the, Asia. The U.K., you could probably get away with some of that, because there is a couple of very interesting missing 4-on-1 styled experiences in the U.K., but... Um, the, the the issue is um is in, in in my country you can go to to jail for the wrong joke so it's you know it's we're not exactly yeah. free yeah you guys are you guys are in trouble too <laughs> it's mostly yeah. scotland scotland ironically the lead um the we all never take our land but you can never yeah. take our freedom like that's the place you don't want to go <laughs> you've took our land and here's and our, we freedom. Took our freedom yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a good thing Benjamin Franklin wasn't Scottish because he's probably rolling in his grave just in solidarity. Yeah, it's eh, oh boy. But gentlemen, it's eight ten. We, it is. To, we should uh, go to questions? super chats now. Wonderful we go to question time. The first one was from Kellen, the official data for two dollars, starting us off with lore daddies and history daddy with immense excitement. This is the daddiest cast you've had. Yeah. It is. Yeah. That's getting none good. of us are fathers. No, not that we're aware of. We well, you do, do have do the boy. Uh, yeah, true. Should I should I bring him up? You should bring hello? him up, Archie. Come here, buddy. Come say hi to the people. You, you should you should come do a um. Buddy. You should do a, a super chat goal of a daddy calendar. Do you guys like his vest? We just we've dress are, up we, in. We've hard, already got a calendar. Head. We haven't done That's yet. That's so, so cool. I love that vest. Yeah, that is best. so cool. He's yeah. adorable. This vest actually saved him. A boxer tried to bite him, and and it got this area. So it got vest instead of Archie. Apparently Archie, just, I wasn't there. He was with my stepdad. Apparently Archie just looked very confused, <laughs> and Boxer also looked very confused. It's like, huh? like they were both like, "Why is why why is it not dead?" Oh, the poor boy with no teeth. <laughs> but he's very cute. He's adorable. He's adorable. Uh, the next one was from local legends Burton Morin for five dollars, saying, "Did you get a chance uh, to watch the video I made where Brandon Swanson went missing?" I just wanted to know your thoughts. Love the content. I have not yet, but I can. I will. I will do my best to remember that. I'm going to open up my notebook and I'm going to write it down. Yes. Uh, in the meantime, Ryan Whitcup for five dollars and nineteen cents. Love the specificity there. Uh, said, "Boys, would you consider doing a video for Indiana Jones similar to the Harry Potter one? Fantastic name and lip decor, Ryan. Go Lions, go blue." Look over. Sorry, I'm just writing this down. You're good. Uh, the only thing that I can say about a potential Indiana Jones video in the style of the Harry Potter one we just did is that the Harry Potter one didn't do very well. So, though it may be interesting, uh, our ability to do it may be limited. Yeah, you'd it, need to clickbait that to high heaven. <laughs> you got to what? You'd have to clickbait that to high heaven. Yeah, I'll yeah that's, that's, so I don't know if I, I don't, I don't think I told you about it, but when I initially was getting ready to do the, like putting everything up for the Harry Potter video, there was, uh, when I was doing the thumbnail, I made a copy of another thumbnail and I just use it. So the previous thumbnail was from the Sodder family, where the, the text on the thumbnail was they never found the bodies. So you just had a picture of Harry Potter with the wand and the text, <laughs> they never found the bodies. And I was like, I, I should have just kept it like that. Yeah, that would have been great. I should have just, maybe I should, because like, at I'd this point, thumbnail. what does it matter? The I'd video did the horribly. Like, yeah. I changed the thumbnail. YouTube actually recommends you change the thumbnails every like three months. Yeah, I'm just not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> no, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> not, YouTube thinks happen. we do. YouTube thinks so we sad. do. <laughs> That's because YouTube has made their like their creator of choice CNN and Fox News yeah. and you know ho Hollywood and legacy media because that's what YouTube is 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 yeah. them tube. You might want to give the big guys know. tube. Don't forget that the algorithm is specifically set to prioritize um, CNN and other news channels. Yeah. And this isn't conspiracy. Susan Wojcicki actually said that, mm -hmm. that she changed the algorithm from what you like to news. Yep, it's... it's. We'll put it back Susan's up coming for us. That's, that's Susan in that's the walls. Susan. <laughs> She's in the walls. <laughs> 
All right, you want to go up to the next one? Agamemnon's gym bag for $20.24. Love the specificity and the number. Uh, feels like it's been a while. Assuming the world doesn't fall apart, let's make 2024 pretty neat. I'd be down. I'm down. I like that plan. That's a cute little hat for the boy. Why are you looking so sad right now, buddy? He's just tired. I'm tired too. It's okay. He's, He's a Wenda a Archie. Wenda <laughs> Archie. Wenda Archie. <laughs> Uh, Daniel O'Donnell for 1783. Love the specificity again. Finally caught the stream. <laughs> Love you guys. And was curious if there will be any more weird Bible podcasts in the future. Oh boy, do we have some exciting news for you. Good news. We're doing what I hate doing and flying this week. Yeah, the kid, the to, kid doesn't like go, planes. I don't like I planes. Relate. But he's getting I on relate. one. I relate. Planes are awful. It. Yeah, we're we're flying down to uh to hang out with Wendigoon and film, I think, three. Plan? that's the plan have we i've got to yet? read a lot of bible this week yeah what have you picked the topics because i'd like to read them as well sure <laughs> <laughs> okay when you do let me know we were going to talk about demons okay that was going to be one i will figure out what the other two will be just send me the passages i need to read sounds good wonderful uh hammond for five dollars says hey guys did you know that in terms of male human and female myth creature breeding Delta Bussy is the most compatible myth creature for humans. I did not, but I think we're yeah. all feeling much more informed after reading that to a large audience. I'm feeling something, and it's not informed. Hey, listen, I'm just disturbed. I'm not saying you should. Okay. I'm not saying I'm not saying you should. All right, but if if a beautiful selfie Selka, came out to me, I'm not saying I wouldn't. Delta Bussy got me acting different, I guess. <laughs> Wouldn't it be a cell cussy? Cell, cell cussy sounds more fluid. No, yeah, oh, I don't I, say I fluid. <laughs> nah. It's almost as like you did it on purpose. <laughs> it's, it's Freudian slip. It's yeah, Freudian right. slip. <laughs> Moving on, Kanashi for $9.99 says, This is unrelated, but when the Harry Potter episode came out, all I could think of was my one-liner during Cards of Humanity or Cards Against Humanity with my family. Cards were Harry Potter on a date, <laughs> and the card was Harry Popper Cherry. Oh no! <laughs> no. I mean, if you've read the books, he does that a couple times. Oh, no. I have I read, read the, the books, book. but that's interesting to learn. Both said that at the exact same time as well. Yeah, we share uh, a brain cell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, pumpkin bear for ten dollars. Thank you, thank pumpkin. You. Uh, ha we haven't said thank you to anybody else yet. Thank you to everyone else oh, who has said as such. Thank you. Uh, happy belated birthday, History Daddy. Didn't know it was your birthday, but happy birthday, Ryan. It was Congrats. on the 30th. Happy birthday. Uh, Thank good you. to see Thornberry feeling better again. Yeah, I don't know if anybody saw that. I don't know if you saw that, but when I was editing on Thursday night, I had some really brutal food poisoning, which is oh, why no. you didn't see as many full serene images and such. I was, oh, I was trying dying. to get through it, yeah. I was up till three in the morning just because I had to lay down every 30 minutes for, <laughs> oh yeah, it was brutal. Bro. Ladies and gentlemen, remember to either replace or clean your tongs after cooking chicken, so that oh, way you don't remove them no. from the pan with the cooking like... utensil. Yeah, I made that mistake. It's okay. No one it can ever say YouTubers don't work hard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but at least the video is doing well despite <laughs> Uh, and then a lot of water-based folklore has singing. Have you? Uh, you have the Lara in Brazilian folklore and the Lorelei in German folklore. I've not heard of the Lorelei. Mm -hmm. I, I know a Lorelei. Actually, in fact... Uh, is is the Lorelei you know, like, big on TikTok at this point? I don't think so. Okay, because there's a Lorelei that keeps popping up on my For You page for some reason that seems familiar, and I wasn't sure if it was I, the one I you I mean, if, if you want to show me after the show, you can. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I did want to... I, I wanted to remember to do this, was uh, the Lorelei I know actually has a, a cousin... I believe it is. Yeah, a little cousin who watches our show. Oh, yeah. nice. Uh, his name is Levi. So, Levi, if you're watching, hey. Hi, how you doing? Howdy. <laughs> uh, Ryan, did you finish your thought? Hmm? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, will, <laughs> uh, I will take a look at the Lara and the Lorelei. Yeah, go for it. Uh, Vendetta XM for $10, thank you very much, says, uh, first time catching the live show, a little off topic, it's okay, we usually are, uh, but what do you guys think of Chris Bledsoe uh, something doesn't seem right to me. Also, greetings from the Poconos. Howdy to another Pennsylvanian. Uh, assuming that you're a Pennsylvanian, you're not just visiting. Uh, yeah, so I pulled him up a little earlier so that way we could look into him a little bit. Uh, are you familiar with who he is or what he's about? Uh, what was it again? 
uh, Chris Bledsoe. He's apparently a UFO, but also like linked with God person. Oh. Oh. Um, I've never heard of this man in my life. Nor have I. That's why I looked him up. Maybe worth us looking into. This is apparently UFO a book that sounds he did. like UFO guy sounds up my alley. True. Uh, I'll take a look at yeah. it. I'm curious. He also has a YouTube channel, apparently. Or no, he was on a podcast. Got it. Yeah, I can definitely take a look at it. Yeah. Could be interesting to reach out to him if it uh, yeah. you know, is up our alley. Uh, Alpharius Omegon for $20. Thank you. Says, uh, from iron cometh strength, from strength cometh will. From will cometh faith, from faith cometh honor, from honor cometh iron. This is the unbreakable litany. May it forever be so. Is that a reference to something? If it is, I don't know what it is. I'm assuming it's a reference to something. Otherwise, he is far it sounds very, sleep. It sounds very Dragon Age-y. Yeah. It does. Uh, Jorah the Explorer, cool name for... I believe that's an... Aus no, it's just A, $5? And Australian's usually A-U-S. So maybe like... Dude, I have no idea at this point. Neither do I. Sess gets to me sounds like the ba a backing band for a 1960s pop group. Opening for the Beatles is Biggie Foot and the Saskets. Yeah, that's valid. I can see. Biggie Foot and the Saskets would go hard. It dude. really would. We should we should find a way to make that skit happen. Yeah. Biggie Foot and the Saskets. I'd be so down. Well, we could just have it be your band. Yeah, that's true. Yep. <laughs> and you all uh, be wearing like giant Bigfoot slippers while you're yes. playing. You have to. Uh, Agamemnon's gym bag for 556. Five, Love the number saying, <clears throat> Stolen waters are sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. Be decent, friends. That sounds like a Bible what quote. What did you guys drink tonight? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a Bible quote. What are you guys on? We haven't been back. Ba we haven't been here in a few weeks. They're all just getting it out of their system. Uh, uh. Hey, because I'm not because because I'm not in the chat to do it. Someone start a sucky bussy chain. Just no, to please don't start a sucky bussy <laughs> chain. Not again. Why would chat. you do this? this? Why would you do this, Ryan? It's uh, not my channel. Chad. <laughs> it's literally why he's doing. It. Yeah, <laughs> valid, valid. Uh, Chad for four ninety nine. Thank you very much. Says you, Chad. I'm gonna get big enough on YouTube so I can talk to you guys. Here's to twenty twenty four. Nice. Oh, well, thank you. Also, you don't have to be big on YouTube to talk to us. You just have to ha have something interesting to talk about. Yeah. Send us an email. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm only like three and a half K subscribers. I wouldn't say I'm, you know, I'm yeah, definitely Yeah, I only have Ryan on the show because I'm attracted to him sexually. Yeah. I thought that was why I had him. Boys, we have things Love to discuss after it. the program. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kellen, the official data for $10. Thank you, sir. Uh, said yes, but we also have Skunk Works that made the SR seventy one, the F one seventeen, the F twenty two, the F thirty five, and the NGAD. Thornberry, congrats on the new job. Thank you. Uh, hi, History Daddy. And is the merch moving to Bunker? I don't have any funny number. Yes, uh, the merch should be moving to Bunker. I have to talk to them to uh, get that process going. Yeah. Uh, and make sure that I did not miss them reaching out to us. Although there are two people whose job is to check the email. So I figure if it had come through, I would have been told. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen anything as of yet. Neither have I. Uh, we can we can go and look through another time. Though. Yep. Um, so next would be. What was, uh, wait, what was the? But what was uh, Skunk Works in relation to? Like, why was that brought up? Uh, I think we we're just talking about things that our government has done. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, yeah, drop your favorite uh, aircraft, military aircraft in the U.S. in chat, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. So, uh, someone, so, someone in chat. Someone so in chat said this sucky pussy uh -huh. chili flavored. Yep. Uh, Pumpkin Bear Seven for five dollars. Thank you. Says a uh, dolphin Brazilian selkie is a pink dolphin, and Laura folklore are similar. Bipe home experiments and the Stateville Penitentiary malaria experiments. I'm not gonna lie, that just sounded like a lot of words put together. But I love how much content was efficiently packed in that two yeah, sentences. I, uh, thank you, Pumpkin Bear. There's a lot to look at there. Yeah. <laughs> also, we should we should. Probably discuss if we're going to be in generally the same location next week because Alan. we'd love to take you out for coffee. Yeah. Uh, Agamemnon's gym bag for $2.26. Thank you. Says, my theory is they were taken by Carl Rove. Probably. Who is that? Uh, I don't know how to answer that question. Okay, fair enough. Like, <laughs> I have to, I, I'm going to have to look some things up really quick. Fair enough. Uh, Kellen, the official data back at it again for $5.45. Love it. Love the specificity of the last two. Yeah, last two. 
uh, depending on the intelligence level mm. of the Sasquatch, if they're actively avoiding us, they could be out there. Uh, Doesn't he, make sense. He was a uh, deputy chief of staff under Bush. Got it. Yeah. Uh, whew. Okay. Yes. Uh, depending on the intelligence, level, intelligence level, if they're avoiding us, they could be. Yeah. Okay. So that's, and, and in my opinion, that leads even further into the possibility that they would be hominids. Mm -hmm. If not, if not Homo sapiens, then at least something close. Yeah. That's but we, again, we know we know about the Denisovans. So if if there were Denisovans in Siberia. I find it very plausible that there could have been hominids in North America earlier than we thought, yeah. especially since we now know that there were humans in America earlier than we thought. It's not that far back. An but... That's an interesting video to look at is yeah. how human do you think the Denisovans were? Because I've seen some wildly yeah. different like ideas on that one. I think I, uh, I think there were a lot of there were people with Denisovan DNA as well. I in, in Asia, so, oh, really? yeah. So Europe is mostly Neanderthal, Neanderthal. DNA. That's and then mm -hmm. Asia is mostly Denisovan. Like that's where the yeah, I think so. Oh, I read there was something weird that popped up a couple years ago where it was like Asians have more ne Neanderthal DNA, but maybe it was Asians had more Denisovan DNA. I don't, I don't totally remember. I also it turns out that like African people have no Neanderthal DNA unless yeah. they had an ancestor who went to Europe and then came back. Interesting. Yeah, like the, not the, the specific ancestor, but the idea is like African populations where there is Neanderthal DNA probably descend from populations that were in Africa, then either crossed the Straits of Gibraltar or went up and around, uh, or you know there might have been land bridges. I don't know what the topography of Europe looked like at the time. Point is, the idea is that these populations went into Europe, bred with Neanderthals a little bit, and then came back. Hmm. Also, how do you feel about Neanderthals and dwarves? That's a very interesting mythology <laughs> hypothesis I've heard recently, and it's brilliant, and I love it, and I think it's true. Like, 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 like the mythical, the Nordic, like the had. Nordic myths that involve so dwarves are about Neanderthals. The idea is, is as we were so th there was a load of failed migrations, wasn't there, out of Africa? Uh -huh. and so the idea is that um, so if you compare, if you just if you if I'd right, I'm going to describe something, and you tell me which one I'm describing. A short, stocky individual, very muscular, who's very good at craftsmanship and tends to live in caves. Which one am I describing? And at the second someone pointed that out to me, I was like, "Oh yeah, no, that that would be that would make sense." Is in the backlog of our I'm memory to, over time. Know, now I'm gonna have to go in and I'm gonna have to figure out why that's wrong. And then you need to figure out precisely why that's wrong. It makes sense. You can't tell me it doesn't make sense. I'm going to be even more mad, even more <laughs> mad if it turns out to be right. <laughs> I'm excited to hear your analysis on this. I want to see it. Well, because like, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, hmm, well, if, if Nordic people going into caves did come across ancient skeletons and saw paintings on walls and realized these people had to be shorter than them and... I don't know. The idea I, I of hate that the... there's enough there that it could be a legitimate connection, but I, the, I, the... See, see, here's where we're here's where we're all differing from the conspiracy theory channels, is we're not taking that little tiny connection of no. well, there were Neanderthals in Europe and there was cave art and there were Neanderthal skeletons. So maybe people came across Neanderthal skeletons and thought dwarves. Like, we're not taking that I'm and going dwarves were real, the Neanderthals were dwarves. Like, because there are yeah. people who would do that. All, all yeah, I'm most saying is, people who try to make money. Yes. See the version. The version I think is that it wasn't. It was skeleton. I think that they saw Neanderthals, and the stories of Neanderthals have become changed. You think they over... saw Neanderthals? No, no, I think this comes from like the early, early hominid stories oh. that would have come, and then over time, the people gotcha. that have stayed in that region have progressed the story. Gotcha. Over, so you're like, suggesting it was hundreds of thousands of years. Pro Magnons who ran yeah. into Neanderthals forty thousand years ago and passed yeah. the stories down. Yeah, interesting I think story. I think it's that old a story. Yeah, uh, you'd, you'd have to. I, I'm not even sure it's possible to. I don't go know back if far enough to find out. No, I, I, don't, I, don't I don't think, think it's possible to prove or disprove that. Well, because yeah. the written record yeah. only goes back so far, yeah. right? It might be possible to disprove it. I, I think it would be very hard to prove it. But Fair. that that thing is, I would say, if you can't disprove that one, then that means it's possible. Yeah. So next up from Richard Henderson for nine ninety nine. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it says, I'm still hung up on the journal entry from the ship captain that they were hunting apes in the mountains in North America. Y yeah, yeah. I'm I'm going to have to, when we do the Bigfoot video, that's, I'm, I'm looking back at that. Because 
I don't, that was not included in the last one because we didn't do the Roanoke video until afterwards. Yeah. Little little teaser for y'all there that yeah. we will be doing a big, Bigfoot video if uh, that wasn't already previously clear from the rest of the podcast. Yeah. Uh, Agamemnon's gym bag for 556. Love the numbers. Says, you gave the upstanding gentleman, who is certainly a plant, contracts <laughs> at Timcast. You did this to America. <laughs> may or may not have been the person who put Ashton Forbes in contact with the Timcast crew. Oh, no. Oh, Might no. have been me. They gave him a contract? No, contact. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, I don't think he is a plant. I don't think he is. I think the best plants I think are the ones who I think, I think the CIA are. is probably happy about him. Yeah, they're like, oh my god, well, he's doing yeah. it for free! All but, I'm saying is the best plants are the ones who don't know that they are. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's a, there is a term for that, but I he unblocked uh, he unblocked us on Twitter, so I decided to be nice to him. Uh, okay. That's good. Yeah. Uh, Clearly, he showed some maturity, so I'm I'm willing to I'm willing to take the baby steps. There we go. Uh, Anthony Peterson for two dollars says for the Archie Fund. Oh well, thank you. Very kind of you. We'll uh, be sure he gets treats. Yes. Miss Maury for ten dollars. Thank you. Says Ladybird Lake, Austin, Texas. Deaths similar to the Smiley Face Killers, but there's living people who have been drugged and survived. Something looked into, maybe. Ooh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. The Smiley Face Killers one. I'm becoming more and more. Con That's what our next video is going to be. Uh, I'm becoming more and more confident that it is not to do with the Smiley Faces at all. Um, Interesting. Yeah, I, I I've been looking into it, and I'm finding a lot of a lot of reasons to believe that the the cases are connected on the city by city level. I don't know about nationally. Do you think so, it's copycats? I think copycats are definitely more likely than organized. Yeah, that makes sense. And I don't think the smiley faces are relevant. I mean, it's just. You go to any major city in the country and you look on on a piece of concrete, you're probably going to find a smiley face, face in somewhere. If I, go, if, I go, if I go to London tomorrow, I could probably find you a picture of a smiley face on my telephone box or something. I could probably walk down Bridge Street tomorrow and find a smiley face. Yeah. Like I, 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 should, I said that on another podcast. I'll, I'll try and do it. But the point is, like, the smiley face connection feels weak to me. Um, there's also some some issues some some potential issues with the detectives uh running it that that we'll go into in the uh, uh so we've done we've done two missing 411 analysis videos now uh but missing 411 or smiley face missing 411 okay yeah i was gonna say we're going to do a smiley face got it, analysis got it, got video it. in the same style got it as that first one maybe in a kind of a, a like a, a part one and part two where we'll do like what what we did with the missing 401 but back yeah. to back yeah it makes sense uh but yeah so i don't think that the smiley faces are really all that important i think that it's more the the manner and method of death uh like the one we're looking at right now dakota james um he's not the only one i think it's very odd that smiley face killers team the those guys they didn't bring this up but he's one of i uh would say five that match it's all young men in their early to mid 20s four out of the five were uh intoxicated when they went missing and all five mm -hmm. were found floating in the allegheny monongahela or uh ohio and all of them were last their last known location was uh within one or two blocks of the three rivers heritage trail which the problem is the Three Rivers Heritage Trail runs along the entire riverfront on all three sides. So it's like, is it is it the river or is it the trail? At the very least, there seems to be a startling correlation between a lot of roughly college-age guys yeah. and if no malicious intent was involved, drowning in rivers. Yeah, so it's... And once again, I think a lot of people are like, well, they're drunk and there's a river and it's like, if it were that simple, there would be a lot more drowning deaths. Like, fair. yeah, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be one every few years. It would be all the time. It's fair. Agamemnon's gym bag for two two three. Love the numbers. Says is Archie's vest level four? Unfortunately, no. 
what level would you consider that? Like 0. 0.5? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might stop a knife. Um, Amazing. I mean, listen, my plan is to never give the ATF the opportunity. Yes. Because as we all know, the ATF detains people and shoots dogs. And also shoots 14-year-old boys and mothers as they hold their infant because they tricked a guy into making a shot, sawed-off shotgun and then crawled up on in ghillie suits and shot his dog, causing his son to turn around and fire at the random intruder shooting at him. So they killed his 14-year-old son. Yeah, it would be really weird if something like that happened at a place called, like, Ruby Ridge or something. Yeah. yeah. It'd, also be, it'd also be weird if they'd been pestering that guy to go into a, a neo-Nazi organization mm -hmm. for ages, and then it turned out that that neo-Nazi neo organization was filled with feds anyway, so there's yep. no point to it. Just remember, really kids, if the federal government needs a crime to happen, they'll make sure it does. <laughs> All right. Next, uh, <laughs> the real William White for five five six. Love the number. Says, "Why don't you publish the Friday videos as podcasts? Seems like they would do pretty decent in an audio only format. You've considered it. We've considered it. Yeah, and we can. I mean, via Spotify, we can post them as videos. So, yeah, uh, yeah we we probably should start doing that. Yeah, we should probably funny. like pick a a starting point when we're like we like how we've been doing. Probably like boy in the box forward, maybe roughly. There's. I think we'd probably need to like." Go through, go through it and be like, this one, yes, this one, no, this one, yet, yeah, yeah, but fair. Probably I think the Slender Man one would go hard. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, next from Links Neptune not for nine ninety nine. Thank you. Thank says, you. Uh, do you have any folklore book recommendations? Love Ooh. your content so much. Thank you. Oh, I just uh, so one one that I really do like is uh, Myths and Legends. It's just a a basic one that I got. Uh, that well, I actually didn't buy it myself. It was a gift, but uh, it was from Barnes and Noble. I want to say. Uh, so that's one. I just got one for Christmas that I haven't had a chance to read yet. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. Because so much of what I end up doing isn't books. Most of what I read is journal articles. Um, but just in terms... Of, I mean, really, it's it's hard to say for something so general as just folklore. But if... It, like, specific, specific things, I could do a little bit of research and get back to you. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll uh, go through and publish a, a list on like patreon or something as a as a free public post yeah that'd be cool yeah by the way we have patreon if you want to support the show uh that is a great way to do it um we have a one dollar tier one dollar a month uh and then there's also higher tiers that get you free gifts yep anywho uh creative art leave for 4.99 says kelpie's my fave folklore love the evil seahorses exactly Kelpies very mean so cool. If you like Kelpies, look up Knuckle of E. It's a piece of Orcadian folklore that makes the Kelpies look... Um, the, the Knuckle of E could body the Wendigo with one swipe and he wouldn't even, like, <laughs> well, Okay, really quickly, hit us with what the Wen... The, not the Wendigo, the, uh, the Knuckle of E is. Have you never heard of Knuckle of E? I have, I just... Oh, oh for the audience, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's 1.30 here, my brain's fine. <laughs> um, but, um, so the Knuckle of E, very, very quickly, um, is a half it's basically imagine a centaur rip off its skin then imagine it's not a centaur um so it's like the rider is in the middle of the horse but it's fused from the waist down its legs sort of go into the front legs and like it's completely skinless mm -hmm. it has one eye that is sometimes depicted on the horse or on the rider a bit like dev ross um and that one eye is like a searchlight and it literally just goes across the island searching for livestock that it can push off of cliffs um, the only way to get rid of it is to burn a certain type of seaweed, but then if you burn that, it will it will leave you alone, but it will kill all of your horses. Um, I've done a full video on this, like it's like 20 minutes long if anyone wants to watch mm -hmm. it. But um, uh, the basically, it comes out of the sea because everything on Orkney comes out of the sea. Um, it doesn't like fresh water. Literally, the only thing that can actually cause this creature harm is fresh water. It won't go over a fresh water stream. It won't walk out in the rain. Mm -hmm. um, it's controlled so it doesn't come out in the summer because the Mithra of the Sea holds back the Knuckle of E. Mm -hmm. And then Tehran, the eternal enemy of Mithra of the Sea, in the winter does battle with her. And then he takes control and then the Knuckle of E comes out to cause his terror on the island. There is only one not confirmed sighting. There is only one sighting where someone claims to have directly seen the Knuckle of E and being chased by it. Um, and that was written down by an Orcadian folklorist called Walter Trail Dennison. Um, he's a very famous Orcadian folklorist. But yeah, that's probably the one I was. I, if did he, if he wrote about the Selkie, he's probably one of the guys I was reading. Yes, he wrote about the Selkie. Yeah, so as well, he's probably yeah. the person I was reading. Uh, also, by the way, I see people talking about Prince Maddock in there. Um, 
I meant to do a video on that. What I is? actually meant to do a video on that, and I completely forgot to do it. What would that fall under? Uh, that's that's the thing. It's kind of it's kind of history. Uh, Madoc is this uh, legendary figure from Welsh history. I uh, well, actually, ironically, he first comes up in English writings. Um, who allegedly in 1170 AD, uh, because there was a whole lot of family turmoil going on with the death of uh, or the the succession following who who would succeed I. Uh, I think it was uh, Owen Gwyneth. Um, I think it was him. Uh, and Maddock was one of his illegitimate sons and basically decided to, you know, F off to the to North America, uh, which he probably would have found out about through the Vikings. Because um, keep in mind, in 1170, we knew this was here. We didn't quite know how much of it was here, but we knew it was here. The legend says that Maddock took a ship and I think it says he actually took several ships, but only one made it got over to North America, and then the thing is, depending on what the English crown was trying to claim at the time, that's where he landed. <laughs> so this story about Maddox oh, comes out, right. yeah, so that they can claim that they were there first, because the Spanish were basically everywhere first. So the English would come in and say, well, actually, this Welsh guy, <laughs> he was here me. first, which I, I, of course... <laughs> would simply point out that Wales was not in England at that time. Therefore, it has nothing to do with England's claim. But uh, yeah, the, the weird part is, if I remember correctly, in the allegedly in the 1700s, I want to say, in France, there was uh, somebody found a copy of a poem that was about Maddock that was much closer to his lifetime uh, and prior to American exploration. And the fact that it would have been found in France was what interested me the most. Um, because if that popped up in France, the French absolutely wouldn't want to give the English any sort of bargaining chip, which means it would be more likely to be real. But again, there's just so much in there that it's, it's going to require a video of its own. So maybe, you know, we'll see. I don't know what kind of interest it would get because it is more of a history topic, but it could be interesting. The worst case scenario, history right. hut. Yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, next would be Zachary Schmidt for four ninety nine. Thank you. Says another missing person. Uh, this one I'd be surprised if y'all weren't aware. Jim Sullivan, folk artist, disappeared in the desert and had an album UFO. Uh, the name sounds familiar, but I can't say I know about the case. Uh, definitely, Aiden's writing it down right now. Um, I will say going out into the desert is a bad sign i mean kenny veach is a good yeah. standard for that yeah kenny's an interesting one because i feel like somebody should have found his remains by now see the, the issue desert. is the, he did say the where issue he was of, going though fair but nobody found the cave like, they, they showed the he, he told people his exact route my thinking is he probably got out there couldn't find the cave He's in a thought cave he could go somewhere. on a little bit further. He's in a cave somewhere. He might also be in a cave somewhere. So <laughs> the, the issue is, I know you credited me earlier as being part of the crew. It's like I don't go down the full conspiracy rabbit hole. When it's aliens, I am the guy who says oh, okay. that not ancient aliens, but I do fully <laughs> immediately go, yeah, no, it was aliens. They abducted them. <laughs> That's the only thing that makes sense. Amazing. Uh, next is from Aussie Trittler, uh for Canadian six ninety nine. Hello and thank you. Uh, I take offense that you don't like planes. I'm not sure if I can keep watching. <laughs> It's that's, not that I dislike planes. I dislike flying. I dislike it's actually planes, mostly that I dislike taking off and landing. Once I'm in the yeah. plane, I'm usually all right. I like Especially if I've had plane. a chance to thoroughly inebriate myself beforehand. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Because I, I do not like flying, guys. I am not excited for Wednesday. Then. I'm going to if, I'm going to get into the Philadelphia airport and I'm going straight to the bar. <laughs> If 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 you got the opportunity to fly into like a like a World War Two plane for a video, would you do it? I hate flying, but I'd probably do it. Hundred percent, yes. I yeah. yeah, I know you would do it. I have to be <laughs> very very well assured that it was not going to fall apart. I'm like <laughs> casually convinced I'm going to get a pilot's license and join the commemorative air force to learn how to fly a Corsair. Like a Corsair. Corsair. I'm going to fly the Corsair. I'm going to fly the Corsair. <laughs> I'm going to go zoom. It's going to be fast. <laughs> <laughs> <Clip>. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Please do. Uh, next is Cakes for four ninety nine. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Tranquil Cottage Knits, which is an incredible username for $2.69. Well, I'm assuming it's a channel where somebody knits in a tranquil cottage. I think it's fantastic. I'm going to check it out. Uh, Ten Bodies at Ladybird Lake. Cops deny serial killer. Interesting. Looks like we're we wrote that down earlier. Yeah, we're that's definitely... Check it out. I will say, there could be a valid reason they're saying it's not a serial killer. Because, like, if the bodies are... Like you know, if the bodies are all in similar condition and went into a similar time, yes, yes, probably serial killer. But also, if it's like, well, this body went in 1967, and this one in like you know 82, and this one was 94, and this one has bullet wounds, and this one has no wounds, and this one has ligature markings, like that's the, 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 probably not a serial killer. Yeah. But if it's like, oh look, all ten bodies have ligature markings on their necks and appear to be female between the ages of 25 and 35, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's <Yep>. those things <laughs> it's the unified details across yeah. time serial killers are generally consistent yep uh agamemnon's gym bag for 226 says reza aslan ate human brain mm -hmm. if you've ever seen the video of him like having that conversation he looks hilariously uncomfortable <laughs> remind me why did he do it uh, he was con he, he was basically doing a CNN shoot on a tribe of it's a specific sect of Hinduism, um, and within that specific sect there is a sect that practices cannibalism. Mm -hmm. So like he, he, was, actually, he was he was he was joke, interviewing right? them. No, it's not a joke. It like actually happened. Yeah, he was interviewing them, and I will say my understanding of it was that he willingly ate the human brain. Uh, I have not seen the whole episode. I will go watch it at some point, but it based on the earlier part of the conversation i think he might have felt like his life was in danger if he didn't eat the yeah. human brain is that the one with a video where he's like talking and then at first he says no and then the guy starts screaming at him and he immediately eats whatever he's given i think so i've seen yeah. a clip where they're like around the fire yeah where he's sitting on a beach yeah yeah that yeah one. that's a clip i think of yeah yeah, yeah where it's uh, like at first i was like and now now i saw that and i was like ah yeah okay you know what i i feel like that's that's not on him Maybe don't go do that. Not not the best bet for Listen, your all longevity I'm, of life. All I'm saying is that if you eat people, I probably don't want to be friends. I think that's a bar we could all generally agree mm -hmm. upon. What if you stop if you, eat, you know? <laughs> if you eat people for any reason other than sheer desperation? Yes. And specifically if you did not kill the person, they died of natural causes. Then, then I'm willing to forgive. We can have a conversation. If you, if you're like, no, I just really wanted some, some thigh. Have you, have you heard about the the German cannibal that ate a another man's um, twinkle? No. Oh yeah, didn't they like meet online because it was yeah, somebody no, who it was had always forum. Yeah, yeah, it was somebody Cam who wanted Cam to Cam be... has a video on it. It's hilarious. I think I'm going to be eaten. Now. Yeah, it was somebody who had wanted to, yeah, be, wanted to be eaten and somebody who wanted to <clears throat> eat human. Then and they, they, like, they met online. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, he, but he, they, he unalived him by cutting off his twinkle and then he fried it and they both ate it and then the other guy died. And, Wait, but, but also... How did he but, die? Maybe well, uh, loss. It, it, it's, it, this is a 40-minute video I'd have to go yeah, for. Yeah, it's, it's a long <laughs> story. But he's a vegetarian now, is a good point. He went from cannibal to vegetarian. So, well, I, I in guess... In prison, I assume? Yeah, in prison, yeah. He's, yeah. He's a chef in prison. <laughs> this is Hannibal Lecter. I mean, I simply <laughs> wouldn't... I simply would not want to eat food cooked by that man. Correct. Huh? It's tofu, I swear. <laughs> like, oh... Why is my oh this is pretty moving? dark for chicken. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of meat is this, pig? It doesn't taste like pork. It's, it's, a, it's an elongated pig. <laughs> The elongated pig. Fun fact, but in, in the UK, we actually had a scandal because um, one of our supermarkets was accidentally selling horse meat instead of cow meat. How do you and accidentally it's... sell horse meat? I don't know. It's very, it's so basically in Europe, um, like in Bel I've, I, I've eaten horse in Europe. Um, that's going to upset a lot of people. I've said, but oh, well, like, I've eaten horse in Europe. It's still, couldn't, it, in parts of Europe, you'll still eat horse quite regularly, but in the UK, it's considered very taboo. Yeah, same here. Horse girls. Um, uh, so, so um basically what happened was the processing plant is in europe and it processed the wrong thing in the wrong packaging 
It's so are you telling scandal. me that horses are commonly eaten in mainland Europe? Uh, it uh, depends on the country. It's, it depends on the country. I, I ate horse in Belgium. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't have stopped at Germany. <laughs> it, maybe we should have taken the rest of you guys out too. But, Not I, you. We, I mean, I've eaten the horse, so I, okay. I, well, you I, specifically, I, then. I, me personally, would be. <laughs> how, how dare you eat Secretariat? <laughs> can you can Listen, you give us I, a comparison between horse and beef for those who haven't partaken? Horse is a. Oh, I'm gonna upset so many people by saying this. Horse is a little tougher, but it's honestly nice to me. Honestly, that's my honest review. I'm up to every horse girl on the planet now. They're going to be quicker than <laughs> at my throat. Quicker than... You have, you no, have definitively wait. reduced the dating pool for yourself by a certain percent. I, this is oh, just very funny annoying. for me because I used to date somebody who was a horse girl. Someone, so like... <laughs> someone, in the, someone, in, someone in the comments. So you're considering going to Europe delicious. and giving it a try? So no. So now I'm like, hmm. How do I ensure that she finds out that this is a thing? <laughs> so I wait. Someone just said it, um, Italy does. I, I, Italy, I did know really? that. I, one of my uh, one no. of my mates is like one of my mates is proper Italian. He's he's like yeah. Um, and also one, someone no. <laughs> someone agrees with me that horse is delicious. So oh no, incredible. And someone also said they horses are good for two things: you. riding and glue. <laughs> yeah, but where? How do you think I get the glue? I I know it was it was a joke. Oh, okay, I know. I just wanted to be British and point out. <laughs> <laughs> Elk tastes really good. I'll, I can say that. I like uh, venison sausage. <clears throat> venison is deer great. sausage, just good. I want to try oh, zebra. Venison chili is amazing. I really want to try zebra. I know it's literally illegal, but I want to try zebra. <laughs> you want to try what? Zebra. Zebra. But Why like, do you keep saying it like that? Because he's British. Zebra. Amanda, you are visible on the screen, by the way. Just so you know. We went for an entire podcast where I was making fun of you because every time I said Edinburgh, you would go Edinburgh. Edinburgh. It's Edinburgh. It's just Edinburgh. Edinburgh. <laughs> Edinburgh. It's like a lettuce. Iceberg lettuce. Edinburgh lettuce. Wait, hang on. Din Ivan. Wait, hang on. Pronounce this place. Oh, God. We have more super chats, guys. Wait, say, say Worcestershire. Yeah, yeah. Say what? Worcestershire. Wash your sister? <laughs> wait, wait, no, no. Say this one and see if he can guess which one you're talking about. Uh, Molestershire. <laughs> what? <laughs> wait, no. <laughs> you what? didn't separate um and Leicestershire. I know. No, I said what it is. It's Molestershire. No idea. It's less. It's Leicestershire. Oh, why'd you put the M in there? Because it. Because <laughs> he's tired and having too much fun. <laughs> Next question. Uh, I don't know. The name Lester just makes me think of people who would diddle kids. And I'd be Leicestershire. So I'd I say mean, Leicestershire. I'm trying to think of a Lester. Leicestershire. Oh, from GTA 5. Sure. <laughs> no, I was just trying to think of where I knew the name Lester from. Probably because it's a name. See, I've you been told to sleep. <laughs> I've, I've, I've been so told tired. Right, I, I, All right, we're going to rip I, into the last one. I thought okay, it was okay, at sorry, 4 a.m. last night and I was up at 9 30. All right, moving on. Because I was arguing with people on Twitter. Yeah, average, average evening. There are things evening. worth time. It was worth my time. I was having. Can a, I just say? I, I was entertaining myself. Can I just say it's worth my time? Fun. Just, I wasn't even being serious. My... I was being silly and goofy. Yeah, but can now you're say, being it's... silly and goofy in the wrong way. It's worth my. Hey, there's still 635 people watching. <laughs> it's it's worth my time because I get to watch it unfold. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're in real time because he was probably awake. Yeah, yeah, you were just having <laughs> lunch watching it. Yeah. All right, Emerald Queen for 199. Thank you. Says first time catching live. Thank you. Uh, hey, I just I just saw one that popped up, so we're gonna skip to it really quick. But Tranquil Cottage Knits for five. Thank you. Said Leonardo Cianculli killed three women and made them into soap and tea cakes to keep her children safe. How does that keep the children safe? I don't know. Well, maybe gonna, they, now I got it. Now I got to look into it and figure out what the maybe, hell happened. Maybe, right maybe the women were molesting them. Leonardo. This is devolved. This is devolved. It's, like, it's fine. It's fine. All right. But okay. Oh. Well, you were gonna look but, into it. Yeah, I was gonna look into it. All right. Uh, next is Janny eight oh nine. Sorry, eight nine zero. Because I have dyslexia apparently. For four ninety nine says requesting an elf mythology video. Also, thanks to your channel, I will never go to a national park. Theodore Roosevelt, be damned. We do have a really old elf mythology video. We do. Yeah. 
We like do. Two years old. What, like the one with Frodo in the front? Like, yeah. is he, no, that's is Hobbit. he real? Oh, Hobbit, right. But yeah, there, there is, there is, there is an elf one. But yeah, I could look into it. The problem you is, you need to do one on the the folklore videos are hard because nobody watches them. Because the it has to be like a cryptid. It can't just <laughs> like I gotta find a a cryptid to talk about as a pretense to tell you about the elves. Yes. Which is a sentence you were, you I almost, never thought I'd say. You almost dipped into the clockwork elves. <laughs> you were there. You were you were on the cusp. What we're going to do is I need to meet the elves first. Yes. <laughs> do a video on the Yeti. Pumpkin Bear 7 for $2 says, By the way, three of the hobbits are in town right now. Will they be in town next week? What does that mean? Well, I assume it means that three of the hobbits are in New Orleans. Who are the hobbits? There are we talking about the actors from yes, the films? Billy Boyd, okay, uh, right. uh, 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 Sean Astin. Okay. I wasn't sure if that uh, Elijah or... Wood and um, Martin Freeman. Nah, he's he was in uh, the, Hobbit. the Hobbit. I'm thinking yeah. of the four from the originals. The, the yeah. originals, yeah. What's the fourth guy who played who played Mary? <laughs> Next. Yo, sorry in light of this tech for $5. Thank you, says, can I get an F? My Fallout Shelter vault just got wiped out by a glitched mole rat attack. Oh, F. Ah. F. F. Also, I, you know what? No, I, I still play the original Mountain Blade Warband. I can't ask questions about why you're still playing Fallout Shelter all these I still years play later. I Crusader Kings 2 occasionally, so I can't so Crusader Kings 2, I, you're going to hate me for this, but I, I just Don't. get bored. Nothing happens. What do you mean nothing happens? How are you playing the game? The, the, as, within... as like a Welsh principality, that's probably the problem. Uh... <laughs> do you see? That was amazing. That was great. That was an amazing response. <laughs> it's already nine. We got to finish. Oh, yeah, yeah, Dominic okay. Monaghan. That's who it was. Uh, Thank you. Alfarius Omegon for $2 says, Here, heresy is the question. Fire is the answer. All right. Baller. Moving on. Molten Amber 85 for $4.99. Thank you. Says, I would love to hear your thoughts about Dover Demon and the hauntings at Fort Warren. Dover Demon is one I've been meaning to look into for sure. War Sage for Canadian $20 says, First time catching the stream. Keep up the good work, guys. Also, as a Canadian, many of us have the same appreciation for the RSMP <laughs> as you do. Thank you for the donation. Good to and know. Understandable, yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they seem worse than useless. Uh... Elena de Howler, Werewolf Queen for 199 says, Mythology, quote, or sorry, parentheses, author, I believe, is Edith Hampton. All right. Fair enough. We'll look into it. Killing the official data for 199 says, more, more afraid to get in submarine or airplane. Oh, definitely submarine. Submarine, 100%. Although I will say, I just started watching NCIS for the first time this weekend, and we're currently on the fifth or sixth episode where they go into a sub. It <clears> does <throat> seem pretty cool, but at the same time... Uh, don't want to go in a sub. Yep. I don't like the I don't like the idea of subs. Nope. Also, after that whole thing that happened, no more. Yep. 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 <laughs> why, why anybody does? I, I, I don't, don't want to implode. Nope. 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 Alpha Omega on based. Make make Istanbul Constantinople again. Is that one? <laughs> yeah. Like, Amazing. Based, yeah. It made a based. <laughs> Murphy Rutledge for 499 says, had to miss the stream because of church. Looking forward to listening at work tomorrow. Keep up the good work. Gotta go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, also followed up with another 499 saying, if God didn't want me to eat my friends, he wouldn't have made them taste so good. What What a phrase to say after declaring you just returned from church. Yep. <laughs> what church? Oh, no. <laughs> That's a great question. Amazing. Uh, Echo Warrior for 499 says, uh, love the content. Went down a rabbit hole and came across a case called the Yuba County oh Five. Seemed to meet some of the criteria of missing 411. It sounds like you're familiar. Yeah, so I first heard about that one from Mr. Ballin way back in... God, it must have been, uh... Must have been 2021. Um... <clears throat> the reason I have not done it is because literally the the week I was going to start researching it, Wendigoon put out a video on it. Mm. Um, so I didn't want... Considering that one time we put out a video at the same time as Missing Enigma, 
and everyone assumed that we were copying him, even though our video was shot and edited before his went live. And also, he's been on the show a couple times now, and he's going to be back on the 21st. Um, like, uh, Yeah, so I just didn't want to get accused of it, especially not with Isaiah. Uh, but yeah, so probably once... Once his video has slowed and died down and we're not poaching in any way, then then I'll be willing to look into it again. Oh, are you just updating that? Yeah. So I was unaware. Oh, sorry. I thought <laughs> I told you about that. Uh, you said he was coming, but oh, we didn't yeah. lock in the date at that oh, point. Oh, he's coming. Oh, he's coming. Oh, he's coming. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, next would be from uh, Kful Royals for 199 Thank, Thank you. you. Trample Cottage Knits for... Oh, that we already got that, that yeah. one, yep. Uh, Catherine Lopez for 499 says, Keep up the good work. Epstein deep dive next, question mark. I value my life. Yeah. That said... Perhaps. Mayhaps. <laughs> Mayhaps we shall. The problem is that's one of those situations where I'm like, hmm, I could read through that entire document, and I could probably make a damn good video on it, and it would probably go really, really well. But for uh, this is one of those rare occasions where the people in that document are absolutely powerful enough to kill me and probably would not hesitate to do so. Yep. So uh, anyway, um, I believe according to the documents, find... Bill Clinton, uh, quote unquote, <clears throat> likes him young. Which is, I think, just something remember, we all knew. Just remember, guys, human beings have the ability to hang themselves and then shoot themselves in the back with a shotgun. Mm hmm. Yeah, but they did it like my favorite. There was a there was some polit political guy that said, "You know the scene from Arrow where he shoots the arrow into the back of his shoulders." Mm -hmm. That was how they said he did it's, it. He it's really it incredible. It's insane. But I mean, allegedly, also, I'm the, not and, but that's the problem though. Especially yeah. like when you come when it comes to like, especially with the smiley face killers uh, cases, the missing four on one. I'm noticing the cops, the local cops, and like the sheriff often try their hardest, and they just don't have the resources. Um, State police, federal police are usually like totally untrustworthy. Yeah. But when stuff like, yeah, when, when stuff happens where the local, where the cops just like say, yeah, this person shot himself four times in the back of the head. If you like that sure. idea, watch Reacher. Watch, watch Reacher, guys. I've, I really, Reacher. I've been liking Reacher a lot. Oh, you've started watching Reacher? Yeah. Is, I've heard it's a good show. It is good. It's, it's good. It's, it's, it so highlights the American government <laughs> to a T. Amazing. Uh, so I pronounced this earlier, but I do want to check if you can correct me whether it's Cap Hill or Caffel, uh Royals. But for one ninety nine, says favorite documentary. Ooh, ooh. I'm probably gonna have to go with Blackfish. That's the first one that comes to mind. Either that or Empire of Dreams. Oh, you can't see it. Hmm. Hang on, let me turn my camera. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> walking, walking with right monsters, answer. dinosaurs, beasts. <laughs> walking with di uh, monsters, dinosaurs, beasts, apes, walking with man. Yeah. Nice. I like dinosaurs as a Solid. kid. Yeah, and I think my uh, favorite documentary, hard for me to think of a documentary film. I really like a uh, documentary channel. I really like uh, Kings and Generals. Mm, nice. Really Ooh. like their stuff. Uh, yeah. Documentary film. It's just been such a long time since I sat down to purposefully watch one. But... Yeah, it's hard to say. Um, I really always liked the uh, History Channel World War II documentary. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were like great. Like the ones where they sat down with veterans and interviewed them. I yeah, think yeah. those were probably the ones that... The ones that were especially associated with like Band of Brothers and Pacific. Yep. Those guys were probably some of my favorites. I just think those ones are really well done. Also, um, I don't know if it counts, but how it's made. Great yeah, show. Yeah, great show. Yeah. Uh, cool. Next, uh, we already got the Alfarius <laughs> Megon one for two dollars. Yeah, you gotta be in charge, dude. I'm, I'm, yep. so, I'm you're fine. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, down for two dollars says Wendigo versus Bigfoot. Who you got and why? Much love. I'm gonna go Bigfoot on that. Well, so that's the Bigfoot. question is, are, are we going most accurate Wendigo versus most accurate Bigfoot, or are we going like cryptid Wendigo versus cryptid Bigfoot? I'm gonna go most accurate. Most accurate, I'm taking Bigfoot every time, yeah. Uh, because the the Wendigo, while insane, is starving. Yes. Um, and desperate. That's why they're dangerous. Yeah. If we're talking 
folklore, I'm taking the Wendigo. Or if we're talking, sorry, cryptid, I'm taking the Wendigo. Yeah, yeah like, uh, yeah. like, the, no, like the, the, the supernatural, the Wendigo from Supernatural, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> taking that over Bigfoot every time. Bigfoot Fair. wins. Bigfoot wins. Bigfoot always wins. Bigfoot's got a torch. <laughs> yeah. This is why I'm, I always, my favorite ones always get in trouble because I always say 99% of European folklore would body most American folklore. And I would, no, I, I stand no, by yes. no, yes. it is so the opposite. Yes. It is so the opposite. Okay, if you put so a we need to set up this debate. A... We're setting up this debate. <laughs> set up this debate. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm up for it. If you put Wendigo right. in the room of a Bogart, the Bogart's winning. What? Have you seen the stuff Bogarts have done in folklore? They're just little dudes with long arms who make mischief. <laughs> the He's just is a little guy. The, the Bogart is gouging out the Wendigo. He's like, put him in a yeah, dumb He's not going to see the Wendigo in. coming. Put him in, put Amphilaith Moors. Do, do, you, do, you know, do you know why, despite the fact that the Welsh and Cornish brought goblins over here with them, do you know why we don't have goblins in America? You gotta say the Wendigo. <laughs> the Wendigo. He ate them. What happens if Wendigo goes off against Leshy? We're scheduling this debate. <laughs> yeah, we got it. We got it. This we'll, is we'll, we'll 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 okay. set up a. We we can each come at it with our. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will moderate. There will be like official like opening statements and like back and forth. But we're gonna have a <laughs> okay. fun period yeah. where it's a true jab for jab bit. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah, that can get personal too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You're gonna call each other short. It'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> um, Morty Moo Moo. For the meantime. Uh, for two dollars. What a name! Gave us two dollars. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Zachary Schmidt for one ninety nine says, "Music wreck, King Gizzard, and, and the, the Lizard, Lizard Wizard. Wizard." I have heard of them. I don't think I've heard them though. I will take a look. I've heard Amazing. good things. Also, Miss Mori, thank you again for the reminder for two dollars of not forgetting a missing enigma this time. We won't forget missing enigma this time. <laughs> and last one because it is well after the fact of the show. Uh, Loki Horror 0409 for 499, thank you, says, have you gotten a chance to look at the David Schultz case in Iowa? He vanished over a month ago with no trace. You want to just put it on? Yep. Yeah, that's kind of the cool thing, is I will say, doing all the missing 401 stuff did, did give me a crash course on just missing persons cases in general. Yeah. So, I kind of learned on the fly, and, uh, I'm starting to, like, notice things. Yeah. in other people's documentaries like especially smiley face killers where i'm like ah hang on a minute like, yeah so if, if it's if it's working out with smiley face killer stuff i'm i'm thinking i might have a shot at being able to handle regular missing persons cases too so maybe we'll take a look but nice. also everybody go uh bug the philadelphia inquirer to put us in their article from a year ago about uh the boy in the box because they still haven't done it yeah they referred to us as internet sleuths not by name yeah i guess not cool. they didn't want to attribute it's been a year. Sourcing. It's been a year, Were they guys. that embarrassed that their entire article was based off of your video? Because it, it, not. I mean, uh, sorry, I don't want to get sued. Allegedly, I know Americans yeah. like to sue if, everyone. If you Allegedly. read the article, if you read the article, it looks like they watched our video and then wrote the article. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> what is? Hang on, I want to pull it up. I, I I won't say it on stream, but I want to see what add, the. Uh... Got to add the allegedly, guys. Make sure you don't get sued. <laughs> got to add the allegedly. Yeah. In I Minecraft. said it looks like. I said it yeah. looks like. Yeah. In Minecraft. I'm not even sure that's the right one. It's I think it's that one. Boy in the box case solved. Yeah, you're gonna need a. Y y yeah, yeah, they're gonna ask you to subscribe. That's why you got you gotta put it in. And you gotta go to Wayback Machine. You gotta put it in Wayback Machine. Point is, wait, hang on. But VPNs, see... VPNs, people, VPNs. No. Probably not. Can't uh, see the person. Yeah, it's it. it's really annoying. the The point is, if you read through the article, it's basically just a summary of our video um i'm not saying that that's what they did just that that's kind of what it seems like so anyway uh with that said i think that was the last of the super chats right it was okay i need to get so much sleep because i have the <laughs> longest day tomorrow we gotta figure out when we're gonna yeah because yeah. i i gotta finish researching then we gotta film the video well at least i have time to reach out to the departments yeah it's true it's true all right. Well, thank you, Ryan, for coming on. Thank you, Ryan, for coming thank on. Yeah, that's the thing we got to do. Ryan, do you want to tell people where to find you? Yes, you can find me at History Daddy on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram, um, and also Twitter if you want some spicy opinions. Um, I will be, uh, I am actually working on a Selkie video, which should be out end of this month or end of February. Um, it's just time constraints at the moment. 
Um, and this Sunday, I actually have a new show coming up called Trip into History, where we will be diving into, we're calling it Sea Maidens, um, basically anything that mankind has wanted to um, shag that's been in the sea for our history, basically. Um, from sirens to harpies to donkeys, <laughs> mermaids and beyond. The fact that there are so many that you can make a series off of it is, is like mildly concerning, but also not surprising. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, it, 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 there's too many stories of just, hey, you're an attractive woman. Oh, no, I'm not actually a woman. Cool. Anyway, <laughs> the entire thing. But yeah, um, yeah. So I'm available at History Daddy. Um, my last video was on Yule, which is now in 16 minutes. I upset a lot of pagans with a video because I told them that it's stupid, the idea that it was stolen. Um, uh, we did the same <laughs> and, thing. Yeah. yeah. Except I did it for an hour and 16 minutes. You guys did it yeah. for like a little bit of a video, whereas mine is just like, stop. <laughs> oh, it's like 15 minutes of the video. Yeah. yeah. It's, mine is just an hour and 16 minutes of stop being stupid. <laughs> All yeah. right. Well, and thank you for having me on, guys. Thank you for having me on. Yes, yes. we will be scheduling coming. the debate as well. Oh, that debate's got to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, we'll, so we'll, up for that debate. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll figure out when that's going to make the most sense to do, probably sometime in February at the probably. earliest. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, with all of that said and done, um, Good night. <laughs> I'm Aiden. This is Aiden Madison. Thanks for stopping by the Lord Lodge. I'm Aiden. He's Aiden. That's this is Ryan. A British thing. Thanks. For, yeah. Thanks Bye. for having me on, guys. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>